Hi guys, welcome back. This is Matt Chat, episode 419, featuring a long overdue uh, retrospective of Icewind Dale. This is one of the great classic computer role-playing games. Uh, came out in June of 2000, just in time uh, for summertime. I remember uh, spending the better part of the summer playing this uh, back in 2000. Great times. Uh, this is a <laughs> obviously a box copy. I don't know how hard it would be for you to find one of these, but... Uh, I thought I would show you the box, show you some of the insides before we get into the game itself. Uh, there's, of course, the disc. It also can, uh, comes with this. What is this exactly? Probably a yeah, lovely, it's not a cloth mat, but it is a nice mat nonetheless of uh, Icewind Dale, the Sea of Moving Ice, Ten Towns, East Haven, Kuldahar, the Spine of the World, Mountains. Uh, we've got a uh, quick reference card. You can fold this out and... Uh, you know, see all your <laughs> uh, spells and, and hotkeys and whatnot. And then, of course, a very nice uh, spiral-bound manual with plenty of pages here for your notes. Let's see if there's a little note. Sometimes they put a little note in here from the designers I like to read. Ah, it's telling me all about the Interplay website. Credits. Yeah, I'll tell you more about who made the game here in a second. Yeah, so it looks like it's mostly just, you know, what you would expect, information about the uh, the game. Just make sure here. Oh, there is a nice introduction here. Everard, trusted sword, Ur of the break, <laughs> Broken Blade. And a note from the, uh, here's a note from the developers I'll read to you. Because you might not have heard this before unless you uh, have the box copy. Uh, so it says, uh, when Baldur's Gate was released in 1998, it was met with tremendous critical acclaim. It was obvious that many role players enjoyed adventuring in the world of the Forgotten Realms. <laughs> Say that again. Uh, and now, Black Isle Studios brings you another title set in the same world. A computer role-playing experience you may undertake either alone or with your friends. Icewind Dale is an epic that puts the fate of the Forgotten Realms in your party's hands. Countless people depend on you. And it will only be through your blood and perseverance that the Forgotten Realms may be saved. Icewind Dale uses Infinity's, uh, Bioware's Infinity Engine, and many of the mechanics described in the manual will be familiar, familiar to those who have played Baldur's Gate and Tales of the Sword Coast. Uh, if you wish to refresh your knowledge of the interface, uh, feel free to thumb through the manual. Uh, the notable differences are the spell section, the world background, and the small listing of arcane items at the end. <laughs> so, so without further ado, this is in the manual, uh, so without further ado, wrap your cloak around you and prepare for your journey into the north. <laughs> this seems like a great segue to me, so let's get this party started. All right, folks, and here we go with one of the great, truly great computer role-playing games of all time. It's Icewind Dale. And this, uh, again, will be the enhanced edition from old uh, our friends at Beamdog. I wanted to tell you a little bit about the game before we get started here. Uh, so it came out originally in 2000, June 29th of 2000. It was uh, developed by Black Isle, published by... Interplay, directed by Fergus Urquhart, who we've had on the show, interviewed him not too long ago. Uh, produced Chris Parker, Darren Monahan, and designed by none other than Chris Avalon and Josh Sawyer, uh, both of whom I've also had on the show, as well as Matt Norton. And the uh, music is by Jeremy Soul. It's, uh, by the way, this game, as you'll hear, has some of the best music of any computer role playing game. Uh, the engine is the I Infinity Engine. The uh, same engine that was used for uh, Baldur's Gate. Uh, but the big thing about this game, as you'll see, is that instead of uh, just controlling one character and recruiting a bunch of NPCs, uh, we get to create our whole party. Uh, it's based on the AD&D 2nd Edition rule set. And uh, to my mind, it's, it's a lot more tactical, it's a lot more combat-oriented than Baldur's Gate. And that's the reason some people knocked it. 
You know, they like the... Uh, I mean, who doesn't like Minsk and M.O.N. and the story of Baldur's Gate? Uh, but, you know, if, you, if you've been watching my show, you know I don't put a whole lot of stock in the story and the characters. You know, if, it's, if, if they're there, great. Uh, but really what's more important to me is the combat and the tactics, getting to put the party together, equip them, level everybody up, just, you know, really getting in uh, knee-deep in the stats. It's kind of what, what I like to be. And this game certainly delivers. So let's get into it. Uh, I'm just going to go single player here. I'm not going <laughs> to bother with the online thing. Don't even know if it how well it works. Probably works pretty well. Uh, let's see. Uh, regenerate character to way. Okay, so I'm just going to delete all these uh, default characters because, <clears throat> again, half the fun for me is creating my own. Uh, let's see, gender. And let's see, once again, I want to uh, reward some of my noble Ratrons. So I'll be naming my characters after them when we get to that point. Uh, anyway, let's see, gender. <laughs> Do I have any? I must have at least a few female uh, pat patrons, ratrons. Uh, but I don't think these guys would want to be female in my game, so <laughs> it's like a male. Uh, let's see, we got a good looking. It's like, is that a dwarf or a halfling? Well, that's definitely a dwarf there, I would say. Oh, this is even better. I'm pretty sure I've seen a couple of uh, you guys use this picture here as your avatar on Steam. Uh, let's go with that. I like the idea of a, a good dwarven tank. Race. Dwarf. See, dwarves. Short and stocky, easily identifiable by their size and shape. Ruddy cheeks, dark eyes, and dark hair. Dour and taciturn. Uh, they enjoy beer, ale, mead, but most of all, gold. Let's get down in, into the nitty-gritty. We get a plus two bonus to saving throws. That's a pretty big deal. Uh, at least uh, certain kinds of saving throws. Poison. It's one thing I always look for. <laughs> I hate getting poisoned. Uh, it's kind of nice not to die either. Uh, let's see. Rods, staffs, and wands, and spells with additional bonuses based on constitution, which that probably is why they make such great tanks. They can see in the dark. Or heat vision, basically, infravision. Open locks, find traps, detect illusion, set traps. So they make a decent thief, too. Uh, unfortunately, they do lose a point of dexterity. <laughs> Negative two to charisma. What the heck? I like a, the look of a dwarf. Let's see, class. Just make him the straight-up fighter. We could get into this stuff, hybrid classes, but... Just take a quick look. Everybody knows what a fighter does, but... Uh, they can wear helmets, any armor. Uh, what's this? Chief Grand Mastery with any weapon class. Uh, two slots of specialization. Hit die D10. So we get a decent amount of hit points. Uh, let's see, class kits. I think these just lay out your... Uh, your I don't know, what, what, <laughs> what do these do? I guess these are templates. So you've got the straight up fighter. Uh, we got a Berserker. Let's see what the Berserker does. I like the sound of that. It's a warrior who's in tune with his animalistic side. During combat can achieve an ecsta ecstatic state of mind that will enable him to fight longer, harder, and more savagely. <laughs> uh, Barbarian-like in nature, but not always. So let's see. They get rage. These are basically barbarians, I suppose. There we go. I don't see any reason why this, uh... Well, if they are berserkering, uh, they get negative two to their armor class to hit rolls and damage rolls. So I guess you... I don't know how if I really like the... Oh, there we go. Dwarven Defender. Well, that's a no-brainer <laughs> for our tank. <laughs> uh, formidable Warrior. Let's see. Advantages. May use defensive stance once per day against one use at level one. Uh, one use at level four, additional use, defensive stance. For one turn, the Dwarven Defender, 50% resistance to all forms of damage. So I don't really have to read on, read further on. This is obviously what I want to go with. Restricted to the Dwarf, so this is, this is great. Okay, alignment. Make him a 
Let's see, lawful good, neutral good, chaotic good. <laughs> Somebody was picking on me about this <laughs> uh, last time. So we'll see if I can do a little bit better job playing just to spec here. Uh, let's see, an honest and hard-working serf, a kindly and wise king, or a stern but forthright minister of justice are all examples of lawful good people. Although it did say I really love gold. So maybe I should pick something that sounds a little bit more gold digging, but I'll just go with that. Okay. Uh, so how does this... Oh, this is the old... Yeah, I forgot about this, so we're back to rolling. So if you really want to be hardcore about it, I guess you just roll once and just pick whatever. Uh, or you can try to get some decent points up here and then uh, futz around with these... Uh, Whoa, look at that. 19 con. That's nice. Strain 17, dex 15. Uh, we can take a couple points off. At least I thought you could. Maybe... Oh, there we go. Maybe we, we could take a couple of points off some of these. And put them into our... Uh, see if we can get our strength up to 18. Whoa. <laughs> can we get... Now, see, that's the maximum we can get on... Uh, on Constitution. Might be able to squeeze in a point of uh, dexterity. I'm kind of wondering if maybe a point of wisdom might be might be wise. <laughs> I think that might affect some saving throughs. I'm not sure. It doesn't really tell me there. Or I could put it into dexterity. I don't like the idea of having too low of anything. Eh, maybe just go with this. That looks alright. I'm trying. I'm kind of used to the newer, the newer games at this point, so I'm trying to remember <laughs> what was what's actually best here. Okay, done. Well, we do get some skills, proficiencies, basically, with our weapons, and obviously, I want to have a, an axe. So come on. Uh, can I put more than one point into axe? Yes, I can. <laughs> Two points remaining. So we can find a backup weapon. You never know what you're going to find in these games. I probably don't... Oh, there we go. Sword and shield style. So I could put a couple of points into that. That's nice. Uh, it changes appearance. I don't usually mess around with that. Oh, the all-important sound set. Let's see. we got the Hearts of Winter voices in here, too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, name. We've got to name this sucker. So let's go over to our list again. And let's see. I don't think I've got Mr. Beard Smite. I don't think I've played with him yet. So we'll call this guy, this dwarf, Beard Smite. All right, there's our first character down. Done. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five more to go. Wow. See? Okay, gender again. Male. So we got a dwarf, uh, basically a tank, maybe a some other kind of fighter. How about... That's what looks like an elf. Let's see, where do we get the humans? <laughs> I don't know what this guy is. He looks kind of evil. <laughs> That's pretty cool, though. It looks kind of uh, like some kind of serial killer or something. Okay, why don't we make a... We could make a half-orc. You know, if that would explain why he's covering his face. Let's make a half-orc. That'll be fun. So they get uh, extra points in strength and constitution. She should make a pretty good fighter class as well. Shamans. I don't know about a shaman. It's going to go with what I know. <laughs> uh, so we don't have the, obviously, the Dwarven Defender option. I'm kind of a little curious what the difference is between the Barbarian and the Berserker. Because they sound very similar. It's like they both get rage. Uh, this straight-up Barbarian can't wear armor heavier than splint mail. But the uh, Berserker... Doesn't say that about the Berserker. He just gets a negative two penalty to his armor class. Oh, after Berserking. Wizard Slayer. 
Uh, so he, uh... Sounds pretty good. If I'm up against a lot of spellcasters, still get a, a bonus chance of causing spell fa spell failure on the target. Disadvantage. May not use any magic items apart from weapons and armor. That's not that bad of a disadvantage, I don't think. Ginzai, Sword Saint. Kai. So that sounds kind of monk-like. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Berserker, Barbarian, Straight Up Fighter. Why don't we just, just go the Straight Up Fighter so I don't have to <laughs> think, think too hard. <laughs> well, I'm kind of... One thing, I want to see if the, any of these get a... The other Barbarian... Yeah, this he does get a... The Barbarian gets the hit die at D12, so he get a lot more hit die. That's pretty cool. Eh. Oh, what the hell. <laughs> Barbarian! What else is a half orc gonna be, really? So, I don't know what would happen. Can we make an evil character have it mixed in with our group? A chaotic evil type? Let's see, such a group can only be held together by strong leaders. Bloodthirsty buccaneers. That's probably a bit much. <laughs> Lunatics and madmen tend towards chaotic neutral. I just go lawful neutral. Get to pick his abilities. You can look at that total roll there if you want and just try to get as high as you can. The later games, I'm pretty sure, just let you put the points in. Eh, we'll go 80 is probably good enough. And we can take some points away from, uh, <laughs> well, that was a high cost high wisdom score. We don't want a half orc that looks too good. We'll go all the way to 19 on the strength. Constitution again, nice to have. Dex as well. Seems like a really good character. Pick his skills. No, we want a half orc. I'm thinking maybe a two-hander. Usually goes the two-handed sword. Go ahead and pick that, so we know we want a two-handed weapon style. I've never been a big fan of the dual wielding. Uh, let's see, what do we what do we want? I wonder if axe also includes those double-handed axe. Ah, da, 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 da. Katana, scimitar. That's a pretty cool image. You know, you know, I can sort of get behind that. But I want a two-handed weapon. And I'm not sure which of these... I guess a spear would be two-handed or a halberd. But I don't know how many halberds I'm liable to find. Usually you're better off cho choosing the sword. Quarterstaff? No. Although that's kind of an interesting image, isn't it? A... A fighter, just a half orc, that just uses a big stick. I'm gonna go halberd. I just, I've always loved halberds, man. <laughs> They're a pretty badass weapon in real life. Okay, well, <laughs> go with that. <laughs> okay, I forgot which one I chose from my other fighter. Steal yourselves. That was it. Gods grant me strength. <laughs> That's not. Here I come. And the hells come with me. That's badass. I'm gonna go with that. Alright, who gets to be my lucky orc? So we went with Beard Smat Beard Smite. We got another Matt here. Old Matt Worky. Rikala. Workala. Proper pronunciation of that guy's name. I'm messing <laughs> with you. <laughs> Matt! Awesome name, buddy. Let's go. All right, that both these characters. I'm really happy with this party so far, man. These are some pretty badass characters. And we got that. We get so many more. I mean, damn. Okay, so we got our we got our tank. Uh, we got another fighter. I'm thinking maybe a cleric or maybe a ranged attack. Some kind of ranger. Yeah, some, somebody like this. And we could make him either a half-elf or an elf. You know, this is something, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but I've always wondered why 
uh, the half elf and the half orc, it's always assumed is half human, half orc. But you know, what about a dwarf elf, like a dwarf or a dwome? <laughs> what about a dwome uh, or a dork? A dork! <laughs> Matt, you always play a dork. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Half elf, we can make a Tannis half elven like character. And what's the difference? We, if we pick the straight up elf, we get a bonus with bows, short swords, and long swords. We do take a hit in constitution. But, okay. Whoa, look at these options. So, do we, do we want to go ranger or straight up fighter again? Let's see, ranger, helmets. May not exceed specialization, two slots in any weapon class. That kind of stinks. Uh, da, 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 da. Begin specialization in two weapon style. So he, they really want you to do the the double, the dual wielding. Get to pick a racial enemy. Does it say anything there about bows? Hmm. Tempted just to go straight up fighter again and make him a. Just sort of make him a. Hey, Chiefs. Any fighting style, allocate three slots and two weapon style. This, for some reason, it just really wants me to go two weapon style. Uh, okay, <laughs> I might go with this ranger just just to try it. Out. I don't usually play with a ranger. Oh, there we go. So he does have an archer class kit. Plus one to hit damage rolls with any missile weapon every three levels. Uh, sounds perfect. It's kind of what I. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> the Stalker. <laughs> uh, stalkers serve as covert intelligence gatherers. Gatherers comfortable in both wilderness and urban settings. Spies, informants. Mastery of stealth. Eh. <laughs> Sounded cooler than it. Beastmaster. Ah, uh, Beastmaster. Great movie. Yes, I know the Panther died. Was it a panther? I don't know. Uh, Beastmaster has a limited form of telepathic communication with animals. Whoa, so this guy eventually can summon. He gets animal sum summoning, which is a great spell. Can you find familiar? You know, I'm kind of feeling this Beastmaster. Does he get anything uh, having to do with bows? He can't use metal. May not use metal weapons. No swords? Whoa, that's that's not good. Albert's Warhammers or Morning Stars may not wear armor heavier than studded leather. Oh, that is quite the trade off. We just go straight up Ranger. You know, I'm going to go with this, this Archer. Just going to go Archer. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to pick something. <laughs> Lawful good, yeah. Abilities. Oh, total roll 86 quite high. Now I'm thinking for this guy I want my uh, I'm gonna want my dexterity to be maxed out. Uh, I still have to remove some points. Well let me oh that's his minimum. Let's see, you gotta get a couple of more points. <laughs> Not going with the strength of uh, that low. Mm-mm-mm I don't want my decks to be up to 18. Let's see. Maybe we'll go with this. Alright, now we get our, his skills. And let's see, he gets two weapon style by default. I could put another point into that. <laughs> two, so what is a, uh, a bow considered? Is that considered a two-handed weapon? I guess it would be a two-handed weapon. <laughs> Not entirely sure. So anyway, we'll go longbow and long sword. Okay. Oh, racial enemies. Where the hell is rats? 
giants, goblins, lizard men, orcs. Oh, come on. I think Icewind Dale. I'm trying to remember what. <laughs> it's been too long. I don't remember. I'm pretty sure there's lots of skeletons, but I mean, those are pretty easy to kill anyway. Uh, spectral undead. Spiders are always nasty. Umber hulks are extremely nasty. But I'd probably get to use it more if I go with the skeletons. <laughs> he just really hates skeletons. <laughs> Let's see, what do I... Well, looks like I'm gonna have to go... ATTACK! I'll wash me beard in your blood. <laughs> That's not an elf. <laughs> Gods grant me strength. That sounds elfy. Alright, back to our list once again. We've got... Garon. Garon, you get to be our archer. Alright. Now it's time for a thief, a cleric, and a mage. Let's make our thief. Where are we gonna go? I think it may be a halfling thief. That looks more like a, a mage. There we go. <laughs> make him a halfling. Well, I could go gnome. He's got some advantages to his, uh, let's see, halflings. Plus one Thacko bonus with a sling. Uh, let's see, pickpockets is pretty high. I don't usually pick pockets. Uh, he loses a point of strength and a point of wisdom. I don't know, gnomes? He gets a point of intellect. Yeah, I'll just... Sometimes you just gotta go with your gut, you know? And we get class gets for our thief as well. We not wear armor heavier than studded leather. Uh, assassin, killer trained and discreet, efficient murder. <laughs> Bonus to hit damage rolls, backstab ability. He's really good at backstabbing. Disadvantages may only distribute uh, distribute 15 skill points per level among thieving skills. Ugh. Poison weapon. I kind of want this guy to be really good with the thieving skills. Bounty hunter, swashbuckler, shadow dancer. Uh, I'm just going to go straight up thief. And for him, we probably want him to be lawful evil. Do we want that? Let's see, once again, an iron fist and tyrant and a devious, greedy merchant are examples of lawful evil beings. Eh. Yeah, neutral good. Abilities. We can do better than a 75. Oh, crap. Hit <laughs> 85 and I accidentally hit it again. Boom. Oh, oh! I think I had an 89. Come on. <laughs> boom, boom. I want at least an 85. But you know, that might not happen. <laughs> when I was a kid, I would sit here all day if that's what it took. If I get an 82, I'll stop. Oh, Miss Ah! Get to clicking too quick. Okay, 82. Now obviously we want to max out our uh, dexterity. We can get that all the way to 19, which is what I intend to do. And I want a little bit more strength, a little bit more constitution never hurts. Okay, yeah, he gets these skills. Not, I don't care about picking pockets. I just want to definitely find traps. <laughs> A lot of points in that. I don't care about this other stuff. Detect illusion. That might be kind of nice. I'm not going to be setting traps either. So I'll go with that. Now well, let's see. He gets. Say he gets an advantage with slings. I don't think I'm going to be doing all that much damage with a sling, to be honest, but might as well go ahead and put a point into it. 
And what thief, what self-respecting thief doesn't have a dagger? Yeah. Well, let's see. Female thief, male thief. The silent blade cuts best. <laughs> I'll take care of it. That's fine with me. Eh. That'll work. All right, back to my list. Now we're down to Mr. James. Uh, hello, James. Hope you like your thief. All right, so cleric and a mage, and then we're done. <laughs> I don't know how long this has taken me. <laughs> Let's see, cleric. Looks kind of clerical. I kind of want a gnome cleric. Let's see if we can find a gnomey. A gnome. <laughs> a lot of portraits. These are good looking portraits, too. Really good. Hmm. That looks more wizardy. Wizardy? Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, let's see. No, um, we'll just call that a gnome. Let's see the gnomes. They do get an extra point to intelligence, but they lose a point of wisdom. So I don't think this would be a very good choice for my cleric, actually. So we could just have a straight up elf. The dwarf doesn't have. I already have a dwarf. <laughs> Damn it, I want this <laughs> diverse mix. Maybe a human. I don't think I've put any humans in the group yet. But that doesn't look like a human. Ah! You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and make our uh, mage. <laughs> and then we'll do the cleric. <clears throat> okay, we'll have this guy be our... What is... Where's mage? Now maybe they can't be a straight up mage. Illusionist. So what is the <clears throat> class features? Can't wear armor. <laughs> what a great feature. <laughs> yes, I can't wear any armor. I uh, may use the following weapons. Dagger, may, may cast arcane spells. Hit dead high D4. This guy's just gonna be a he could be a fighter slash illusionist or a cleric slash illusionist. Illusionist. Uh, gnomes can choose this multi-class, but become cleric illusionist by default. Gnomes are the only race that can go in a specialist mage class in a multi-class. Okay, well that sounds okay. <laughs> I always like to take advantage of your racial perks. Making lawful good abilities. We're gonna want a lot more wisdom than that. Let's see if I can get up. 81, 83, there we go. Now let's see if I can get him. Oh, I can't. Ooh, this is gonna be tricky. I guess we can take all his <laughs> charisma away. This is one ugly ass gnome. Okay, get his. Wisdom up, get his intelligence up, and I'll make him a little bit prettier. <laughs> That's just a five is still pretty hideous. I'm guessing this guy's got like a big bulbous nose and boils and stuff. Terrible breath. All right, though. Well, it's kind of interesting to think he could wear a, a shield. Anyone can pick up a shield. So that might be well worth it. And I guess uh, maybe a sling for him too. I really don't want this guy on the front line. Well, now we get to pick our mage book and I think the obvious choice is probably going to be armor here. It's a good spell. I like it. Reflected image. Travel alongside. I guess this is one of his illusionist, yeah, illusion spells. Probably gets a good advantage on that. Is that the only illusion spell? A spook. Level 1, range 30 feet, duration 3 rounds. Area of effect, 1 creature. See the caster, which then appears to advance upon it. 
He turns and flees, so <clears throat> basically trying to get a creature to flee from him. <laughs> Not the most impressive spell. Eh, we'll go with it. Memorize two spells from the following list. We want armor, and we'll go with that reflected image. We got a little bit of a more protection. All right, now we get our priest spell. This will be a pretty versatile character. Let's see, armor of faith. Bless is usually a pretty good choice. I don't see how we can go wrong with cure light wounds. What else do we have there? Protection from evil. This basically only lasts for a battle. I can pick that, I suppose. And maybe bless. Appearance. Yeah, looking good. <clears throat> Why don't we have a male cleric? Interesting. We got thief and mage. Maybe they think a mage is close enough. Ha ha! To the pain. Watch your back. It is a shame that we must resort to violence. <laughs> it's never a shame. Come then. That sounds good. All right. Uh, this is Jan's lucky day. All right, one more. And I think for this one, I do want to make a straight up mage. That's our heavy arch. Ooh. Not sure what race that is. Kind of a sinister. I'll go with this. <laughs> elf. Straight up elf. Source mage. Sorcerer might be kind of fun to play. I don't usually play them. And I go with what you know. Mage, diviner, enchanter, wild mage. <laughs> wild mage! <laughs> like David Lee Roth of mages. <laughs> Uh, alignment, awful good again. Abilities, oh, we can get better. There we go, 83, good. All right, let's get the, uh... you know, I kind of would like to have at least one character that wasn't hideous to look upon. Let's see if we can get that intelligence up to 18. Ooh, I don't want to take away from my... <laughs> uh, okay. We'll go with this. Mm, dart or sling? Yeah, I'll make him a darter. <laughs> Who darted? May choose two spells to put in your spell book. I'm not going with those again. Yeah, I think armor is a good choice, and you can't go wrong with uh, sleep. Magic Missile, I'm hoping I'll be able to pick that up at some point. He only gets one spell. Ugh. And let's see, go back to our mage. To the pain. Ha ha! Watch your back! It is a shame that we must resort to the pain. To the pain! <laughs> he looks like the kind of guy that would go with that voice. All right, our last one will be Mistya Christian. All right, we have our party created. Wow. And we are good to go. All our right. tale begins here, in the quiet fishing village of East Haven, one of the so-called ten towns of Icewind Dale. The tiny community is hardly a town, but rather a collection of ramshackle huts crowded together upon the icy shores of Lac Dinashir. Here, within a dimly lit tavern, a group of travelers sit huddled around a table, swapping tales and making grand plans for the future, completely unaware of the part they are to play in the events that are about to unfold. Classic. Okay, we're in the tavern. <clears throat> What is this? New face in town, eh? Well met, stranger. The name is Rothgar, originally of Hillsfar. But now, after years of traveling up, down, and under Faerun, I am content to call this town my home. Who might you be? Really nice voice work. 
Let's see. Greetings, Hrothgar. My name is Beard Smite. <laughs> or who I am is none of your concern. Well then, welcome to East Haven. Whatever your business in these parts might be, I would offer you this small piece of advice. While you're in my town, you'd do well to be on your best behavior. Hmm. So let's get drunk and wreck the town. These folk are under my protection, and anyone who would seek to do harm to them in any way shall answer to me. Right, we got it, we got it. That said, I'll let you get back to your cups. I'm sure you've had a long journey, and you'll find there's no better way to shake off the cold of the road than by downing a few mugs of Grisella's Best. Grisella's Best. Hope somebody's got that ale. Uh, and if you're in need of lodging, I would recommend talking to Quimby over Quimby. at the Snowdrift Inn over on the east side of town. Oh, Quimby. Equipment and supplies can be purchased next door at Pomob's Emporium. Uh, Pomob's prices are a bit high, even for a Kalashite. But you'd be better off well-equipped and short of coin than the other way around. Ill-prepared travelers don't last long in these parts. Once you've had a chance to rest up and get your bearings, come by and see me at my house. It's just a couple doors west of here. There's some business I would discuss with you. Farewell. All right, so far so good. Should start the timer, see how long it takes us before we start fighting a rat. <laughs> uh, something popped up there. See, one thing I want to do, I think, is uh, just the sound a little bit here. Maybe lower some of these. Keep the voice up. Music volume down. Movie volume can stay the same. Okay. Let's see if I can remember how to move around. <laughs> there we go. So, middle mouse button scrolls us around. Okay. Yeah, let's see. Is it a tab? The alt? Shift? I thought there was a key we could hold down to see uh, what we can click on. Let's see, it's been a while, it's been too long. Let's see, keys, inventory, character, return to game. Probably under miscellaneous. Uh, location, toggle, quick loot. Uh, quick loot. Well, what is the... Maybe there's no such button <laughs> for this one. <laughs> Location. I'm not seeing it here. A lot of uh, interesting key commands, though. Maybe it's under feedback. To hit rolls, turn the, all this on. Visual feedback, journal pop ups, and <laughs> no cosmetic attacks. <laughs> oh god, my makeup's being attacked! Information selection text. Yeah, gore is on. <laughs> Group information. Uh, max H HP on level up, yes. Rest until healed. Yeah, some of this stuff might be good just to put in. I don't know if this some of this might be some some of the enhancements they put in, or if this is just Hearts of uh, Fury. No difficulty based XP bonus. Multiplayer chat box. But I like how you can sort of fine tune this. I like it when the developers leave it up to the player. So I guess there's no, like, there we go. Okay, tab. <laughs> I don't know why that wasn't working before. Let's go talk to Grisella and get some of that ale. Oh, where's he going? <laughs> okay. Hello there, dearie. Welcome to the Winter's Cradle Tavern. My name's Grisella. What can I get for you? How about a drink? A drink, of course, dear uh, dearie. <laughs> Plenty to drink. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> uh, you see, I'm a bit of a bind right now. Just run out of everything. Oh, that's the way it is, isn't it? I have nothing to offer you in the way of drink at the moment. What kind of tavern are you running here? <laughs> well, the tavern hasn't run completely dry. I do have some stock down in the cellar. I like where this is going. But... But what? <laughs> well, I suggest you march on down there and get me something to drink, woman. <laughs> no, but what? This is rather embarrassing. But I'm having somewhat of a past problem down in that dirty old cellar. Afraid to go down there. I do so hate bugs. Oh, it's bugs. It should have been rats. I uh, just thought of those nasty creepies and crawlies and shivers down my spine. 
A big girl like you afraid of bugs? Come on, show a little back. Uh, great, a tavern with no booze and bugs to boot. <laughs> I can't wait to see the rest of this town. <laughs> I'll just come back. Uh, let's see. Obviously, we should help the help Grisella out. That's awfully sweet of you. But I don't expect you to go to any trouble on my account. Have no fear, madam. I shall see to it that the pest down below trouble you no further. Wonderful. The stairs to the cellar are in the back room. Now you be careful down there. So it sounds like we've got our first quest. Let's see, do these guys have any gear? Looks like all we got is a stick to start off with. But that's better than nothing. Let's see, how do we go to my max tune? There we go. <laughs> Give them all, the, I guess they come with these quarter staves, staves. Everybody's got one. Let's go whack them. Whack some buds. You gotta remember what to select all. What is, mm -hmm. there's a key for that too. What is the key to select all? <laughs> I thought I would remember this. I know there's a key. Let's see what the key is. So we're gonna be doing that a lot. Let's see, page, actions, miscellaneous. Uh, hmm. I know there's a key to select all. I'm just not seeing it. <laughs> I'm not seeing it. <laughs> well, I probably have to look in the manual because I'm. I just know there is. All right, well, let's see about mm. our, get our yes. pages. Armor. Your wolf shall stay. Your wolf shall stay. What is quick save? <laughs> quick save is Q. <laughs> okay, <laughs> at least I remembered one damn thing. <laughs> Let's go down there and kill these rats. Bugs. The battle is joined. There's something, uh... Oh, this is hard to hit. There we go. Crates of foodstuffs line the wall of this damp cellar. Wooden casts of strong smelling brews have been stacked in the corner. These racks hold num numerous bottles of wine and other spirits. So is that it? Are we, are we done here? Yeah, I guess that's all there was to that <clears throat> little quest. <laughs> that was challenging. You know, I'd like to have been in the room when they were discussing that little quest. What do, they, probably, they probably thought, I can, I can just hear them debating whether to put rats or bugs or Something else. <laughs> ah. Uh. Any luck getting rid of those nasty bugs? Come on, anybody can get. It is done. <laughs> Thank you. You're a lifesaver. Just do me one more favor. Keep this little bug problem between you and me. I don't want folks thinking Grisella's place isn't clean. Run along now. So boom, we just got 1,200 XP for that. So I'd say we're doing pretty good. I see somebody here named Hildreth Highhammer. Let's mm. talk to him. Well, Ned, why you seem to be like a fresh new vein of ore, all untried and untested. You know, I don't think anybody's ever called me a fresh new vein of ore. <laughs> you calling me an ore? All untried and untested. I be Hildreth, should you wish to know. Yeah, vein of ore, what do you mean? Uh, what I'm saying is that you look a little new at this adventuring thing. Do you know who you're talking to, Hildreth High Hammer? Get off your high hammer. Uh, no offense intended, we all have to start somewheres. If you be looking for tips, I even have some news that might prove interesting. Oh, I see. What news do you have? I'm uh, not all eyes and ears here. Most I've been keeping to my cups to keep the chill away. Uh, but I have heard that a local sword named Rothgar is putting together some sort of expedition. Interesting. Thanks for the tip. 
Do the folks around here say that Rothgar be a valiant man? Not the type to go dashing off to his death. That's too bad. Uh, they say he be an excellent leader. We're heading up to the mountains to investigate some sort of disturbance up there. You'd best be talking to Rothgar himself to hear the full story. Yeah, well, if you're going, it must be a good trip. You seem like a seasoned adventurer. <laughs> okay, so I guess they're kind of prodding me towards Rothgar. But you know what I really want to do is uh, get some better gear on these guys. Oh, what's this? Oh, that's the door. Ah! Pomob's Emporium. Which apparently has high prices, even for a Kalashite, these prices are high. Let me just listen to that music. Can you hear this music? It's just... It's just... You know, if that doesn't make you want to play a role-playing game, nothing will. Uh, that said, I might need to <laughs> lower the volume a little bit. <laughs> You'd probably rather hear that music than me, but... You can always play the game by yourself. Okay. Uh, the soundtrack is available, available, by the way, separately, which... You do a lot worse than to listen to, listen to that. What is that? These thick plush carpets have been rolled up for easy storage. Can't you just picture Chris Avalon writing all these descriptions? Oh, there's some purses on the wall. <laughs> Those aren't purses. <laughs> Those are leather satchels, obviously of poor quality and workmanship. Their stitching is loose and haphazard. It's doubtful they would rely oh, reliably hold the weight of a few more than a few coins. I mean, that's almost a paragraph of text just for some purses hanging up on a wall. You know, I don't think they'll maintain this level of detail throughout the game, but it is nice to see. Ah! Can't tell if this. <laughs> what has he got in his hand there? <laughs> Do I want to know? <laughs> what kind of shop is this? <laughs> we get you walk, walk up to a shop and there's a guy. <laughs> Maybe he's an ex Walmart. Maybe he's a disgruntled uh, ex Walmart greeter that got fired. Laid off. Pumab, what is this? More barbarians come to my shop? No doubt with nothing to barter with but more wolf pelts and polished stones. Very well, let's get this over with. <laughs> oh, what pleasant service here at Pomobs. Let's see, I can threaten him. Right, I'd like to see what you have for sale. And I'd like to see some coin before I go to the trouble to show- Whoa, showing you my wares. I have no patience for those who are just browsing. <laughs> Man, this guy's a bit of a jerk. Look you, Toad. I have gold and I need supplies. You're going to sell to me or what? Try that. This guy's being a bit of a jerk. How dare you speak to me in such a manner? Do you know who I am? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you are a pompous little man who runs a little shop in a little town at the arse end of Faerun. <laughs> well, I'm going to go with that. Yeah. Humph. I am Poma back. Kazimar, Kazimir, Royal Diplomatic Envoy of Kalashem and appointed overseer of the Northern Caravan Roots. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and I'm the King of Mithra Hall. Ha! Huh. Your poor attempt at sarcasm is an obvious sign of your lowly birth. I'll have you know that I am third cousin to the Pasha himself. Mm hmm. If you're in such good standing in Kalashem, then what in the nine hells are you doing all the way up in Isundale? <laughs> the Pasha. Uh, ask me to accept this post of overseer of the Northern Caravan Roots as a personal favor. Hmm. I see likely this post is not but a convenient excuse for the Pasha to get rid of a royal pain in his arse. <laughs> I mean, you know, how, do we really want to piss this guy off if we're going to try to buy from him? Ah. I guess we're kind of stuck on this now. I would not expect someone of your station to understand such matters. Now, if you do not mind, buy something or leave. <laughs> okay. So I got about 600 gold. I guess that's the divvy up between all these characters. And let's see, we got chain mail, splint mail, hide armor. Whoop. Looks like we can do a decent job here. And the helmets in this game protect against critical hits. That's always good. All right, so I guess we'll just... The splint mail 
armor class four. The chain mill armor class five. What? <laughs> I read that right. <laughs> so the. Oh man, is this one of the games where you want to get the low armor class? Yes, it is, isn't it? Okay, so we want at least a couple sets of that. Maybe a set of chain mail for our uh, other two guys. Let's just take it one at a time, make sure we don't mess up here. Okay, what is the ground? No, I want to give the other suit to him. I forget. Is that somebody that can wear it? So our cleric can wear it. Oh, I think I bought an extra set. Or did I? Oh, dog got it. Yes, I have an extra set of chain mail here. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> I just have to sell that. Oh, my wizard spells have been disabled. Oh, that stinks. All right, so I really messed up there. Yeah, two extra sets of stuff. We'll just have to sell back, and he's probably not going to give me a very good deal when I go to sell it back. Yeah, look at that. Lose, lose a, a lot of money. So I don't know what this thief can wear. I guess I should do this. <laughs> so he can wear studded leather armor. Seven versus eight. So yeah, I get him a set of studded leather armor. And let's see, I guess the mages won't be able to wear anything. Yeah, so I should give this to my thief instead. Okay, now see what little bit I have left over. Now I probably should reload after that fiasco, but yeah, what the heck. Sometimes it could be a little bit more challenging, right, with the... Uh, Less money, so we want to get him an axe. There's a battle axe. Okay, there is a two-handed axe there. Let's see, what was what was this guy's weapon? He's a he's a halberd. Okay, get him a halberd. Yep. And How this can I help? Guy, I want him to very have well. A bow. So I might be able to make this work. You usually find better stuff than you can buy anyway. Oh, that's expensive. That's going to just about wipe me out. <laughs> yeah. At least we can get it. Huh? Hmm. tricky to line it up just right. So I guess we'll get this guy a sling. Let's see, get him a dagger and a sling. Well, you know, he could throw daggers. I didn't really think about that. He could just be throwing daggers the whole time. Of course, that would get <laughs> quite expensive. Oh, we have to have bullets, too. Oh, this is going to be close. This is definitely going to be close. But I think I just have enough to get these guys outfitted. I guess I can sell back these quarter staffs. It's not going to be very. Uh... There we go. Much better. I bet you those quarter staffs aren't worth much. We can see. Go to the. Oh, we got to get arrows. <laughs> Jeez. I'm getting everything I learned. Where does this go? Now, this is one thing I don't miss is the having to have arrows. And bullets. Where does this even go? Quiver. Okay. He might be more effective in melee. Let's try him in melee, see how he does. If he takes too much damage, we can we can swap him out. I know these mages need to be in the back though. Okay, they can keep their sticks. Just need to get some arrows. Oh, I'd like to get some helmets. So I guess it's worth one gold. At this point, <laughs> that's not. We don't want to throw that away. 
How did you get throwing daggers? Did I buy those throwing daggers by mistake? I guess I did. Okay, well. Why not? We can get some arrows and then we can get out of here. Hopefully they're not too expensive. There's one thing I remember about this game and not with fondness is constantly having to come back and <laughs> get more arrows and bullets. Okay, so we are equipped. Take a little break here and be right back. Alright, and we're back. Got my new shirt here. See if you guys recognize this one. <laughs> I don't think anybody's guessed it yet. I posted it on uh, my uh, Matt Chat Facebook page. I give you a little hint. It's from one of my favorite shows. Okay. Uh, so we got these guys fairly well geared up. Now I want to scout the town because I need to find some more money. Ah! Because I still haven't tried Griselle's, Griselle's Ale. Snowdrift in. And I need to get these guys some helmets and probably a little bit more ammo. Those 40 shots ah. will go quick. Dr. Quimby! Greetings, traveler. The name's Quimby, and I welcome and I welcome you to my inn, which is as clean as an elven arse. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe this one's not as clean as an elven arse. Maybe it's maybe it's as clean as a half orc arse. Let's see. Well met, Quimby. You seem enthusiastic. Hear anything interesting lately, Quimby? Now that's the kind of thing you always want to be asking the uh, asking the innkeepers and the bartenders, right? See if you can get another quest out of them. Uh, oh yes, uh, the whole town. The whole town's been talking about the upcoming expedition into the spine of the world. Excitement! Now tell me more. Well, we already know Ruthgar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Everard will stay behind to minister to the town. There's a dwarf named Hildreth who will go along as well. Even Pomob has agreed to go. I don't think we really need to get a room yet. But maybe we could sneak back there and see if there's something to steal. So let's see, this is our thief Ready. here. Okay. Let's see, where is... Is there a search mode? Stealth mode? Thieving. Which one is this? Fine traps. Ah, uh, there's somebody. Aravane Black Chief. Well met, friend. I'm Aravane Black Chief of Everuska. It's been many moons since I've seen friendly faces. Despite the dreary nature of our current locale, East Haven is a welcome sight for these elf, <laughs> elven eyes. <laughs> an elf, hey, what in the nine hells are you doing up here? I'm going to start using that as my curse word. <laughs> what in the nine hells are you doing up here? What's with the locale? There's nothing wrong with a little bit of chilly weather. This sounds like what a true Minnesotan would say, so I'm going to pick that option. I suppose it's fine. I just used to see the sunny climate of my homeland. This place is like an icy anvil, where the hammer of Oril smashes down upon us, leaving the landscape barren and the horizon foreboding in every direction. Yes, this is Minnesota. <laughs> it literally came this big winter storm last couple of days. I haven't been outside. It's been so uh, miserable out there and cold. Let's see, true, true, being a traveler, you must hear a lot of interesting things. Uh, well, I haven't heard any rumors lately. However, when I traveled through Kuldahar, I had a strange feeling about something in that valley. It's more than just the weather that bothered me, something seemed to miss in the mountains, the trees, even the clouds. Something was out of place. You know, something's definitely out of place when even the clouds <laughs> are bothering you. I can't put my finger on it, but yes, yeah, something's odd about the weather. Yeah, such as, it's April, and it's still... <laughs> <laughs> Snow and ice out there. Okay, we have our... That is locked. Let's see. It's always a little bit different in these games, but I'm... Yeah, there we go. Lock picks the city. Good work, James. And we have a... Skydrop Gem. Common aim given to clear or lightly colored tectite material. Fragments of glass of celestial meat meteoric origin found in the vast shifting sands of Anorak. 
and other deserts. And that, friends, is everything you ever wanted to know about Skydrop Gems. You're like a geologist. But it's, it's the little details like that that, to me, make a game fun to play. I mean, you know, if you, if you don't want to read this, don't read it, but... It's just nice to know that it's there, that somebody's put some thought into it. Probably, uh... I don't know if they got that from the official, uh, Dungeon Master books. Yeah, I call them Dungeon Masters. I know it's not the... Everybody wants to call them, uh... Oh, what is it? Game Masters? But to me, like, Game Master just sounds like somebody working in Las Vegas. A man, uh... Manning like a roulette table or something, right? <laughs> I mean, this is the game comes from Dungeons and Dragons. That's the game that started it all, so I want to pay some homage to that. You, know, you can call it Dragon Master if you like. I'll call you Dragon Master. <laughs> that sounds pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, it's just a townsperson. He doesn't have a name. What is... There we go. What is that? See, the graphics are such that you have to click on this to figure out what's going on. <laughs> Scores of knuckleheads. Knucklehead. Knucklehead. Okay, I guess that's a kind of fish. Scores of knucklehead hang from these wooden racks. The stench from the drying fish is almost unbearable. Mm. Knucklehead. <laughs> Look at this big old map we had to explore. I know it doesn't look so good if you like zoom in super close like this, but... I mean, you get a little bit of distance here. And this is just a beautiful, uh, beautiful scenery. I mean, it just looks marvelous. See, Damien. Quick, we've got to get go get Hrothgar. There are monsters in town. <laughs> they almost ate me. <laughs> oh, slow down. What are you talking about? Monsters! A whole bunch of them. They came down to the shore while I was fishing. I dropped everything and ran when I saw them, but they didn't chase me. I thought they were going to eat me, but they just were after my fish. Those knuckleheads after their knuckleheads. <laughs> you best be telling the truth. You know what happens to little boys who cry orc. <laughs> Go bother someone else. Oh, clearly we have to be nice. Where are these monsters now? Ah, uh, just over the bridge down by the lake. My da told me not to fish so far out by myself, but I can't help it. That's where I catch the big ones. He's going to kill me when he finds out I've lost today's catch. <laughs> All right, we'll deal with them. Your journal has been updated. I haven't really looked at the journal yet. Nice font. Nice uh, look to it. Yeah, it looks good. I guess we have our user. Whoa, 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 go back. <laughs> what happened there? User. Oh, add entry. Yeah, so we could even put in our own notes here. Input our own notes. I don't know really why you'd want to do that, but uh, I guess you could say I couldn't open this lock or this monster's too tough, come back here. Or you could really get crazy and just start typing in your own narrative. Let's see, there's little Damien. Let's see if we can spot these monsters. Ready, your command. I'm actually wondering if my. Yeah, my armor spell's still working. Mm. Ah! There's our, there's our monsters. Quite a few goblins. Ready. So I hit the space bar to pause it. See if I got any spells I might be able to use against these things. Protection from evil. Bless. Probably don't. What need is to it you those. require? Where's his spell? I guess he's out of spells. <laughs> he only gets the one. Mm. Spell. At your service. Why does he not have his thing activated? Let's go to work. Hmm. I guess he's got no spells. Is that possible? Let's see. How do we get to his magic book? Oh, yeah. I guess he's only got one freaking spell. Well, let's just charge in, then. This one's mine. I want to see that halberd in action. I'll take it. <laughs> Goblin. Fricassee. Oh, crap, Here. he's almost dead. Poor Matt. Agreed. I probably don't want him to die yet. 
get him out of there. Let's see, I got a clear cure, right? How about a cure wounds on our friend Matt? Why are these guys just standing around? Prepare yourself. That's a good reach of the palmer. I wonder why yes. these guys keep stopping. Come then, let us begin. I don't remember having to tell them to attack every time. I thought they all would attack. Maybe I'm misremembering. Hmm. Go ahead and grab up all the stuff. I need all the money I can get at this point. What is that? Knucklehead Trout. High quality morning star. Short bow. That high quality morning star. I don't know if that's gonna be better even. Usually your whatever weapon you're proficient with. Better. But it's probably worth some money. Ah. Let's see, there might be some more monsters down here. Go ahead and fully explore. Yeah, I don't see anything, so let's go back to old Damien. Of the goblins just exploding into pieces. Okay, little kid. Got your fish bones. Were you able to get my fish back? Today's your lucky day. <laughs> Here's your fish, at least what's left of it. <laughs> Try to get more money out of the kid. Come on. I'd best be going home now. My dad's probably worried. Already lost an item. Knucklehead trout. Boom! Another. 1200 X XP. Huh? I might actually let's see how far am I from uh, the next level. Should say here somewhere, right? Da, da, da. Where's my XP? Maybe it's on the other screen there. Experience 453, next level 2000. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> so it's gonna be a little while. That's okay though. We're not doing too bad. Gotta make sure I keep Matt out of harm's way though. There's a little door. A lot of times these games you can find little hidden things. Sometimes you have to scroll your mouse all around. Small still cage contains what appears to be a small furry rodent of some sort. The creature is not moving. Either it is quite soundly asleep, or it is quite dead. Ah, Somebody's already killed the rat. Mm. Hey there, matey. How are you doing? Nice to meet you. How are you? <laughs> Woo! Been hitting the sauce lately, old man. <laughs> well, there's no need to be mean about it. It's a real problem for me, you see? I need me wine to fish. It's a matter of life and death. Is there anything I can do to support your downward spiral into oblivion? <laughs> well, you go to foam mobs and fetch me some wine, then go back to me fishing. That's what it's come to. We gotta get this old wino some more wine. He's whining about his wine. Yeah, you seem like a nice old man in that drunken fisherman sort of way. Hey, thanks, matey. You can find foam mob store in the northeast corner of town. Shouldn't he be, uh, if he's talking like that, you'd think he'd want rum. Hmm. Uh, fisherman's Ale. Yeah, it's okay, I need to go back to pull mob, sell this gear I picked up. Might be worth looking at this uh, high quality Morningstar. Thacko plus one, damage 2d4 crushing. So let's give it to him and see what the stats look like. So that's Thacko 18 with that, Thacko 16 with that. So I'll go, I might, you know, it might be worth keeping in case I run into some monsters that can, that are susceptible to crushing damage perhaps. Eh, 
<laughs> On second thought, I'm just gonna sell everything. I need the money. I don't know how much this uh, wine's gonna cost. Ah! Ah! Okay, let's see. Sell. Sell all of this. You know, it's kind of sad they had all those uh, short bows, but no arrows. Well, that was worth 25. Okay, let's see. Let's get the wine. Where's the wine? <laughs> A bottle of wine, three gold. Hey, what's this? Gym bag. Especially well suited for holding all manner of gems and jewelry. You know, that probably will come in handy. You know, maybe I'll buy that. What is scroll case? Potion bag, yes. <laughs> I imagine all of those are going to be incredibly useful. And then let's get everybody some arrows. Or get him some arrows. And the rest of these guys. Bullets. Okay, nice. And then let's see. He wanted uh, some helmets, I think. Let's give him a helmet. I think the orc would probably wear the that one. We'll give this one to my. Uh, yeah, this one's probably the most dwarf-like. Uh, he's not going to be much of an archer with his vision obscured like that. Maybe go with that one too for him. He can't wear a helmet. He can wear a helmet. And there we go. Okay, I think I've about bought everything I really need to buy. So helmets on these dudes. Yeah, I like the that's going to come in very handy, I'm sure. Yeah, so you can open that up. Keep your inventory organized nicely. Give him some more arrows. Or bullets. <laughs> oh, he still got a gem I need to sell. Yeah. Helmets. Helmets for everyone. Always bugs me in Hollywood films where they... You hardly ever see anybody with a helmet on, you know, because they got to show their beautiful face, I suppose. But I mean, come on, you're in a you're in a battlefield with arrows or bullets flying around. You don't have a helmet on. Let's sell that skill. Sky drop gem, twenty gold. All right, so I think I'm. Hey, there's an upstairs here. What's up there? Ah. <laughs> yeah. Chazar Jim. Looks like a block of cheese, a wedge of cheese to me. That's cheese, come on. What is this little guy? Ooh, a high quality dagger. Awesome. Go ahead and give that to my thief. You know what the hell? We'll let him get into a little melee. Oh, scrolly rollies. And a potion of healing. Okay, now we're talking. Now I'll show you something about this game. Uh, this is how you learn new spells. You can learn spells off of these. Let's see how it works. Think. Let's look in the game difficulty options. There's some stupid setting where you could uh, sometimes not learn the spell. I hate that. Enable cloud saves. Don't melee after depleting one ammo stack. That sounds good. Multiplayer chat box. Enable. Hmm. I thought there was a 
Hmm. Oh, wait, 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 go back. Core rules. Yes, yeah, so core rules. Hit point rolls are random. Party members can permanently die. Spell learning has a chance to fail. That's the part I hate. <laughs> Normal. All hit points are maximum. Party members cannot permanently die. All spells are learned automatically. And opponents do three quarter damage. Uh, uh, I want to get full damage. I don't like the. Maybe I just turn it off until I get these spells move right and turn it back on. Say so right, right here we go. Right magic. If you choose the other option, sometimes it'll fail. And you just lose the spell. And that would just kind of stink, really. That's just not a good way to make a game more difficult, in my opinion. Just makes it more uh, frustrating. Okay, so. I guess I could have gone downstairs and sold this, this the guy's stuff back to him. Which I think I'll do. Here's those gems. <laughs> Here's the, the gems I just took from upstairs. Oh, wait, sell them all. There we go. All right, 148 gold. But I'm not sure I this guy's got anything left for me to buy. Other than more arrows and stuff. I gotta hold on to my ah. cash for a little while. We're already having a lot of fun. We haven't even gotten to the gotten out of town yet. Ah! Enter Cradle's Tavern. What is this? Jeffy. What the hell's going on here? Squirrel. Cast a spell for me. You wouldn't let the ice demons eat me, would you? Shizello, cast a spell for me. Is that a real blade? Do they really want me to cast a spell? I need it. Yeah, I can entertain them. Try protection from evil. Anytime. I caught a big fish, but it got away. Oh well. Can we talk to the squirrel. Don't touch it, it may bite. You know, if I was a really evil character, I would kill the squirrel. I'm kind of curious if they if they thought about that and programmed it in. I'll resist the temptation. You can do that when you play. This is like just a house. Yeah, you see the pathfinding and needs a little work. There's a little Rothgar, but I don't really want to... I don't want to go yet. I'm still kind of exploring the town. Okay. Maybe I won't talk to him. What is this? If you are reading this note, then obviously you are a thief come to rob me of my hard-won hard riches. Sorry to disappoint you. Did you really think I would keep my valuables in such an obvious and unguarded place? Consider this note a warning. I do not care much for those who would poke their nose where it doesn't belong. And anyone caught practicing thievery in the town of Earth, East Haven shall answer to me. Okay. <laughs> As we continue thieving. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he will, uh... Oh. Just a couple arrows. I don't know why he's getting so upset. Well met, friend, and welcome to my home. Make yourselves comfortable, but try not to break anything. Many of these curiosities that you see lying about have sentimental value. There's some pretty weird stuff lying around here. Look at this rug. It's like some kind of monster. What is that over there? It's like a mind flare? Yeah, it's just these little details that always... I just love to see that kind of stuff. Where'd you get all this? Oh, they're all remembrances of my adventuring days. Little trinkets and the like that I picked up here and there. More keepsakes than valuables, really. Leftovers from my days of fortune and glory. Impressive. Indeed. Well then, this might interest you. I'm putting together an expedition of sorts, one which would surely provide opportunities for both fortune and glory. This is the business I wish to speak to you about. Really? 
Tell me more. We've received word from Kaldahar, our neighbors to the south, that evil forces are stirring nearby in the spine of the World Mountains. I am organizing and leading a party from East Haven south to Kaldahar Valley to investigate. You look to be capable enough. Perhaps you'd like to join us. What say you? Let's see. Nah. <laughs> we just want to play the game we bought. <laughs> just say, no, count me out. Sounds too dangerous. Maybe next time. I mean, what? What? What are you gonna do? Is really, you're really gonna select that option? Come on. If there's treasure to be had, we're in. Sounds exciting. Count us in. Excellent. Glad to have you on board. I plan to assemble the rest of the expedition and set out for Kaldahar within a few days. With storms brewing in the mountains, I'd rather we depart sooner. But there are matters that require my attention here about town. Ah, uh, uh, more quests. Actually, now that I think about it, maybe you can help. Poma, the local shopkeeper, has recently expressed concern over the rapidly thinning stock of his store. He's been complaining that the regular caravan from Kaer Dineval is long overdue, and that if they don't arrive soon, he's sure to be out of business. Now, normally I take Pomhop's whining with a grain of salt, but with heavy snows on the way, it would be best to make sure that caravan makes it through. You just love this guy's voice acting. I mean, it's just so good. I want you to find that caravan. Leave town by way of the South Bridge and scout the hills west of Lark Dinnershire, between East Haven and Kerr Dineval. Caravans always stick close to the shoreline this time of year. Once you find it, see the caravan safely to East Haven. In the meantime, I'll assemble the rest of the expedition and make the final plans for our journey. Hmm. Return here as quickly as you can. We must make for Kaldahar Pass while the weather is favorable. Good luck. Safe journey. Yeah, this is what they consider favorable weather. Okie dokie. Ah! Ah! It hasn't gotten ah. home quite yet. <laughs> I don't know if this one includes an option to turn off their voices. Mm. Usually drives your significant other's nuts a game like this where it just keeps making a sound like that over and over and over and over and over and over. Oh, what's this? What's oh, yours? Ah! Stick over here. Yeah! It's kind of random. Let just take your spear. <laughs> ah! Ooh, what is this building? That looks fancy. Temple, maybe? Akalia. <laughs> Hello, my name's Akalia. I'm an initiate here at the Temple of Tempus. The Temple of Tempus. The Temple of Tempus. Help Everard maintain the Temple Armory. I'm Beard Smite. Let's see. Tempus is revered. A great deal by the barbarian tribes up here. They call him Tempos. <laughs> the Temple of Tempos. Uh, we immigrants see a lot of conflict and violence in these parts. People want to make sense out of it. Barbarian tribes? And what sense can be made out of it? Where are you from? Originally from Neverwinter. I came here to aid Battle Lord Everard. The former war priest Renfield was killed in a battle against the barbarians near Bryn Shan. I guess these barbarians really don't like the immigrants too much. It changes from season to season, from year to year, like all things. They are mistrustful of us immigrants, and often view our settlements here as an intrusion on their land. Let's see. Bah, some civilized nation should come up here and smash. <laughs> uh, well, they should. You people treat this land like garbage. Uh, sound like a love-hate relationship. It's just part of our daily routine. We know that the barbarians are just a few peaks away, and we immigrants understand the danger that they bring into our lives. <clears throat> Part of a simple truth that we Temperans believe, conflict is all around us. Okay, if we kill, if we die, the same, we preach that conflict and war are vital to mankind's existence. You know, I'm sensing the hand of Avalon in this dialogue. <laughs> it's getting a, a little philosophical. I agree. Even if we don't like the fact that it's happening, conflict is pretty inevitable in life. You know, deep thoughts are like a, you know what, 13, 14 years old when you're playing this for the first time, a lot of you. I'm pretty sure I might have been like, uh, hell, I must have been like 20, maybe? 
19 or 20. Yes, yeah, exactly. That's why we East Haveners practice the temper and faith and perform the rituals. <laughs> what rituals? Uh, we celebrate the Feast of the Moon in remembrance of the battle dead. We also sing the Song of the Sword at least once a ten day. Everything you ever wanted to know about the Temple of Tempos. What are the Feast of Heroes? So you kind of wonder at this point, is it, do you want to read all this in hopes that you might get to a quest? The Feast of Heroes is a meal that we eat at High Sun. Remember the final meal which each warrior eats before he or she enters mortal battle. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Just tingle. <laughs> go on, go on. The Battle of Jared's Stone. I'll tell you more about it, but Everard prefers that any questions about it be directed to him. Okay. That's <laughs> enough. <laughs> I guess we gotta go talk to Everard. Hmm. Rothgar mentioned there were strangers in town. What is it you want? I am Beard Smite. Are you the High Priest of this temple? Yes, I am Everard. Everard of Tempus, Battle Priest of the Lord of Battles. What brings you here? Let's see, Akalia told me to ask you about Jared's stone. She said it has something to do with one of your holy days. Jared was a shaman who lived long ago. He brought unity to the northern tribes and led them to victory against the army of Arakan at the cost of his life. How did he die? Once Arakan saw his army routed by Jared and the northern tribes, he sought to bring the Hells to his aid. Arakan opened a gate to the lower plains. Usually not a good idea. See, he brought demons to the battlefield. The northern tribes would have been destroyed. I do not believe that. Jared did. It is said that Tempus himself appeared to Jared upon the battlefield, and Jared took that as a sign. A sign to do what? Jared believed Tempus was calling him to sacrifice himself for his people to ensure victory. And so he cast his body into the portal, his blood fusing it to stone. It lies entombed beneath the temple to this day. Hmm. Jared had no need to sacrifice himself. Tempus's appearance was a test of faith, proof Jared's people had already won the field that day. Jared failed his god and died a coward's death. See, look at this option number one here. Are you sure his death was in vain? Jared did seal the poor. <laughs> How do you know you're going to be interrupted? <laughs> One dies for Tempus with a blade in one's hand, not by martyring oneself within the embrace of infernal magics. Jared's duty was to stand with his comrades, not cast himself to his death when the field was already theirs. So why am I arguing with this guy about people I don't know? <laughs> sacrifice? Let me say this of sacrifice, young one. Then we shall speak of this no more. Sacrifice is a death that has meaning. When it is in vain, it is not sacrifice. It is a waste. That is the lesson of Jared Stone. And that is the lesson of Jared Stone. Oh, we got a journal update out of that. And this stone is buried beneath the temple? Aye, a great stone disc that holds Jared's corpse for eternity. And so I watch and guard it in Tempest's name. You know, I'm sure I'm not the only one who's thinking, man, I need to steal this stone. <laughs> you are free to ask, Traveler. I promise well, no see. answers. I don't really want to know more about Tempos. You know anything about the expedition? What's that glyph-covered door beneath the statue? The door leads beneath the temple to the site of Jared's stone. It was sealed with glyphs of Tempus to prevent entry long ago. <laughs> Can you tell me the tale again? <laughs> no! You are yes. free to ask, I Traveler. I promise no answers. Temple. Yeah, what's this? Oh, the old uh, temple screen. I haven't seen this in a while. So let's see, we can buy some healing. It's kind of pricey. Make a donation. Let's see what they've got for sale. Some potions of antidote. Another scroll case and a potion bag. You know, I just don't think you can ever have enough of those. <laughs> inventory, inventory. It's always about the inventory. Okay, let's get the heck out of this temple.
A glyph-warded door set into the floor appears to lead down into a chamber beneath the temple. There doesn't appear to be a way to open it. There's a lance over there. Round shield with a number of wicked barbs protruding, protruding from its surface. It's an amazing amount of detail here in this temple. Yeah, my thoughts exactly. Another <laughs> town's lady. Never wonder if you were in a game like this as an NPC what your label would be. Kinda sad just to see yourself a town person. Towns person. There's Absol. Oh, thank the gods. Whoever you are, you picked the perfect time to wander by. I could use some help. That seems to be the problem. A wolf somehow got into my workshop and is tearing the place apart. It attacked me as I was opening the shop this morning. I was so startled by the sight of the beast that I accidentally broke the key off in the lock. Now I can't even get back in. What do you want me to do? Get in there and get rid of that stupid thing. Then I could get back to my scrimshaw. <laughs> Very well. I'll dispatch your troublesome hound shortly. That demonic... Demonic canine. So let's see, which one of these is... Must be the one he's standing in front of, right? Yeah. Okay. James, uh -huh. my door. <laughs> There's our wolf. Let's let our tank get in there first. I'm listening. And those other guys. Whoa, <laughs> that was that was hard. Done. Is there anything I can steal while I'm here? Oh, I can't. I thought they'd be a fur. Several finished pieces of beautifully carved and polished scrimshaw. This wooden workbench is cluttered with tools and scrimshaw savings. Shavings. You know, and again, just looking at the detail here, it just blows the mind. I mean, obviously somebody knows a lot more about what scrimshaw is than I do. Convince <laughs> me. Let's go get our ex. <laughs> that was so hard. I want like <laughs> a thousand gold and two thousand XP. The wolf is no more. Thank you for helping me. Here's a little something for your trouble. Oh, we got a dagger. Yeah. Thacko plus one, one d4. So the question is, is it better than the one I got for this guy? Let's see. Plus one Thacko, one d4. So we got a high quality da dagger. Thacko plus one, damage 1d4, speed factor 2, plus one 1d4, speed factor 1. So I think that makes it faster, right? Speed factor. I don't know if that's explained anywhere. <laughs> What's the speed factor? No, you can't just right click on it. You'd have to look in the manual. <laughs> I guess that's one way we could figure it out. So an axe, the speed factor is 7. The halberd speed factor of 9. So that makes sense that the, the lower the number is, the faster it is, right? We'll go with that theory. Oh, what's this, a book? No, it's a container. A box. And there's our winter wolf pelt. Ah. Okay. This guy be about the best patient you could ever have in a doctor's office, right? Open up and say, ah. Ah. Okay, you can stop now. You know, I'm not hearing that you must gather your party before venturing forth. I guess I seem to remember that, but I guess it's not in this game. Ah. 
Churin. I am Churin. How may I help you? What do you do here? Manage this warehouse for the fishmonger Gaspar. Get paid a sum to score scrimshaw and emergency food supplies here through the harsh winters. Anything interesting happen around town lately? Don't get to hear much gossip. If you really want to know what's going on, I suggest you buy a few rounds over at the Winter's Cradle Tavern. Alright. I guess that's about it for him. <clears throat> a little flavor text. And I think we've pretty much explored the place. I could have sworn there was like a little secret... A little secret treasure around somewhere. Sometimes you can just scroll your mouse around and find it. There's like a loose rock or something somewhere. I seem to remember that. Could be just making stuff up though. Another townie. And Joan. Let's see, Joan. Sorry, friend, I don't see you didn't see you standing. Your name's Joey. Your time might be better spent fishing in the lake than in your dreams. Seem preoccupied. Staking in the view of the lake for a bit, trying to shake these dreams out of my head. Dreams? Dreams have been fishing in me of late, so much I can barely catch a wink. In frustration it is at times. Sometimes it seems like they're more real than the waking world. Well, there's a woman. And don't give me that eye. It's not like you think. Uh, she walks up on the surface of the lake as if it were flagstones instead of waves. She doesn't say anything, just sings beautiful songs. That sounds like maybe a, a siren, right? The truth be told, friend, damn it, there's no sense to it. These dreams are eating at me like a starving wolf. I can barely hold a daily thought in my head. Let's see, try to help the guy out. Let's see, let's look at that journal. Oh, we gotta bring the bottle back to old Jed, forgot about that. The dream song. Huh. Well, those are pretty interesting. That's an interesting quest. Let's try to remember where old Jed was. This old Jed. Wasn't he down here somewhere? Was he inside? I think he was. Yeah. I'd like to hit level two before we go. The growth car. Ah! Oh, you better make this last, Captain. You're not always going to have strapping adventures around to get your medicine. <laughs> Don't drink it all in one place, buddy. Farewell. Wow. 1800 XP and six gold mm. for that. Not bad. Ah. Ah. All right. <laughs> so, if I turn down the voice volume, I don't. Character dialogue. I don't know if. The, I don't want to turn off the volume for all my characters. Character movement sounds. There we go. Wait, is that. Is that considered a movement sound? Or, ooh. Ah. Hmm. Ah. <laughs> nope. <laughs> uh, what would that be then? Battle cries? No. Selection sounds. Command sounds. There we go. Okay, that got rid of it. <laughs> Good. <laughs> that, ooh, ah. It'll definitely get old after a while, I think. All right, where do you think this siren is? Must be down here, right? Not the only place we haven't fully explored. Let's see how close I am to leveling. Oh, a long ways. I might not be able to get to level two. 
Yeah, here's a little strange blue skinned woman. Something tells me that's what I'm looking for. Smurf Smurfette. No, it's Alicia. This woman has the skin like the surface of the lake. Light green hair and delicate features like that of an elf. As you approach, she begins to sing a soft, flowing song, like the sound of a great undersea current. But you have no idea why the song reminds you of that. In the moment the song and the feeling passes, and the woman looks at you peacefully. <laughs> Who in the hells are you? <laughs> Let's see, are you the woman that Jonan, Jonan sees in his dreams? Jonan? Yes, Jonan, you are the woman from his dreams, aren't you? You know where he, it is he walks? Yes, I spoke to him recently. He doesn't want you, but he doesn't know what you want of him. What do you want? I am the calling Alicia of the Sky's Mirror. I am of the calling Alicia of the Sky's Mirror. Strange punctuation. My heart is Jonan's, but he cannot see me in the flesh, or else I will become as the currents upon the shore. A gift I do have for him, one of his blood long ago who also held my heart. Gift? Many reflections of the moon have come and gone since the day in which one of the blood of Jonan fell beneath the waters of the lake. He fought the last of the great white serpents that swam upon the northern winds. The queen mother, Icasarakt, who now lies without life on the bed of the lake. A promise was made and I must... I mean, isn't this is fantastic? Like, all of these stories, <laughs> just in this little intro prologue. It's kind of almost a throwaway, a throwaway stuff. But look at the detail, look at the creativity that went into all this. Uh, the one from Jonan comes asked, I see his blade return to those of his blood if the queen serpent Kassarak drank his life. So you wish to return the sword of Jonan's ancestor to him, but you cannot, but you cannot because the sight of you will make you stream away to water. It is one of the laws in the lands meet the lake's mirror. Will you give this to Jonan and tell him my heart? My songs are his, my heart is his. I will see to it. Here then I entrust this to your keeping until your path crosses with that of Jonan. Return when you have given it to him. I return. I'm pretty sure they're not going to keep up this level of uh, storytelling throughout the whole game. It's very impressive so far. Let's see, where's old Jonan? There he is. How's that damn song go? Hmm, eh? Greetings to you again. Found the reasons you have in those dreams. The woman in your dreams is a sea spirit. Her kind speak through song, which is why you couldn't understand her. A sea spirit, eh? What does she want then? Why in the dreams? Let's see. She's one of the spirits of the lake that seek to lure men to their deaths, children. The dreams are bait. Or we could say her name is Alicius. Oh, I see. <laughs> so we could try to get the sword for ourselves with deceit. That doesn't sound like a lawful good character. So let's say her name is Alicia. Speaking through dreams is one of her talents. <coughs> she speaks to you because she loved one of your ancestors and has carried a promise for him for many, many years. One of my ancestors? Why come to me then? Your features remind her of him. Your heart is as strong. She wishes to give you something that belonged to your ancestor. I will. Of course I will. Sorry. I'd be honored to accept anything she wishes me to have. He told Jonan why he was plagued with dreams. We're getting kind of scrunched up here. So we can give her the weapon. Here you are. It's the blade your ancestor used against Icasaract. Such sadness. Your journal has been updated. We told Jonan why he was plagued with dreams, and we returned to him his ancestor's blade that Alicia wished to give him. He was dumbfounded by the gift, and he seemed more than a little sad that she would not be returning to him. Such sadnesses are the way of people from two worlds. Hey, that's great. Oh, we leveled up. I mean, it's a little simple fetch quest, but we have this, this sort of moving story that goes with it. 
I mean, I really do think that was... I'm just kind of guessing it was Avalon. You know, I had two other people on it, though, at least, so... Maybe not, but... That's good stuff. Let's see, we got to return to her again, tell her that... We gave the thing to Jonan. Then we can look at our leveling up. Yes, I returned the blade. Ooh, another 1800 XP. Man. <laughs> Apparently, they really wanted you to do that. Case. Okay, let's see. Oh. I guess only one of my characters leveled up. Yeah, I've forgotten. The, in this game, uh, some of the classes level up faster than others. Let's see, where's level up? Level up. And also, we can't we can't get like a level of something else. We're stuck with the uh, thief since we picked that. That's okay. That's one of the reasons that they give you so many characters to play, right? You can get a lot of variety that way. Let's see, what else do I want? I see a fine traps. So fine traps and I guess is also disarm traps. Make sure those are up high. Okay, so we got a level two thief. Good job, James. Okay, I think we are now ready. Was there there's something else to do? Let's go to the journal. Find a missing caravan out of Caradinable. Take the south bridge out of town. Okay, yeah, so we can do that. Well, let's go ahead and do that then. Bridge, south bridge out of town. Where's that? Is this it? <laughs> Must be. I don't think there's a way out here. It would be nice of you. Yeah, it doesn't look like I can get, can get out that way. So let's go this way. You know, it's been a long time since I've played this. I guess it's been longer than I thought. I I tend to play this. Maybe it's Icewind Dale 2. I tend to like that one better. But I'm pretty sure I've played this. I know, well, I'll play it when it came out. I know I've played it at least one time since then. There's a lot I don't remember, though. I guess that's one benefit of getting older. You start to lose your, your memory. It can be a bad thing, obviously. But on the other hand, you can play games again. <laughs> And not remember a lot of the details, so you get to experience it again. All right, there we go. There's that. You must gather your party before venturing forth. Let's see, I need to camp or something here. All right, we camped. Cast our spells and yeah, get that armor back. Just show you here. So his armor class now is 10. The spell goes through. Now this is all the way down to 6. Which is not bad. I mean, it's not as well, it's as good as this guy. Does he not have any armor? My archer? Oh, what the hell? <laughs> Did I forget to give this guy armor? Oh, I had to rectify that before we go go on. Whoa, wolves. Wolves. Let's see what kind of magic we got here. Anything that might be useful? Protection from evil. Bless. I guess we can try to bless. Man is just determined to die. For some 
reason, he's always the one that takes the damage. Okay, let's get a spell on him. Heal him up. Oh, I forgot to turn the difficulty back up to core rules. <laughs> you know what? Screw it. I'm not even i have to keep doing that over and over again. See, these wooden caravan wagons lie empty and abandoned in the snow. Ooh, got a little cave. What's this? Orcs! Nice. Maybe I'll hold Matt back and let everybody else rush in. No, he's... <laughs> he's a half-orc. Maybe they have a threat against him. I thought I put this guy on his dagger. Okay, he's got a dagger. Who's this guy there? Okay. And there's that treasure. I gotta watch it because it can only carry so much weight. These uh, energy bars, I'm pretty sure that's a bean belt thing. Finally, some more arrows. It's a little bit more loot. And I can't send my thief on, I could put him in shadow mode here. Yep, sneak him in. Ooh. Let's get him over there. Whoa, that's a lot. <laughs> You'll probably get him killed. But that's kind of a cool thing you can scout ahead like that. I'm gonna make sure to send this guy in first and uh Let's see, is there any spells I can put on him? another trick with these older games. You could try to sneak in a little bit, get a few, run back. Instead of charging in there, taking them all on. Crunch! God, I love that. Crunch! Here went my spell. <laughs> That's back. <laughs> okay. Let's try it again. Run away! Run away! Usually the archers are not Oh, we got a priest here. That's right. Oh, but don't die. Yeah, these guys are not automatically attacking. I gotta figure this out. Is there an AI button or something I have to activate? There we go. So I just turn it off or on? I can never figure this out. Speak your mind. So maybe it was on. Why aren't they attacking? It's a little bit lame if I have to do that. Click on every bad guy. What is this? Reveal details. Ah, oh, okay. Well, let's see. They must group in for vision, rest until healed, hurry fury mode. And, and, uh, feedback. I don't see anything here about AI. It's weird. Rest again, though. Ready. Yeah, 
remember there was some kind of option about not switching to melee if you run out of a stack. Okay. Gotta be careful in here. Oh! I didn't want to do that. <laughs> don't die, don't die! Oh, there's archers up there. Great. Quickly, quickly. Now, for some reason, these guys in the back don't want to attack. If I can get to the next level, then you get a free rest. This stuff. Don't leave anything behind. No loot left behind. Even if it is only worth one gold. I want that gold. Okay, let's see if we can rest. Let's go back over here, maybe. Sometimes you get attacked when you rest. There's rats! Doesn't look suspicious. Let him detect traps. Oh, see the trap. We have a scroll there that he can learn. Protection for petrification. I was petrified. Well, that's because you didn't use your scroll of protection from petrification. So it works. Boom. And how does Matt keep getting up there, Matt? Matt, slow your roll. <laughs> he won't kill. So what am I doing out here? Looking for a caravan? <laughs> I don't think I don't think I'm gonna find a caravan in this dungeon. But there are some orcs. Oh, this is a nice little fast one here. For this rogue to really do his thing, I gotta get him behind the enemies. Let's go to work. No, not you. Can't get back there. You know, I saw some kind of option about quick loot. I don't know what that does. Yeah, I think I'm gonna sneak in here. Where'd you go, James? You have. Whoa. That's gonna be a big fight. Let's see what kind of spells we have. Do a bless. And then we also have protection from evil. Guess I don't matter. Okay, let's do it. I'll go ahead. Sneak, sneak you over here. Ah! Right behind there and see if he can do some back. What would you have of me? Well, I don't want you to be that close for one thing. Oh, is that good? Let's see, Garen, get out of there. 
This is not good. Get him off of there. Over there. Backstab. Fear I am wounded. Oh, jeez. Oh, this is not good. Come on. Get him. I am needed. Let's see. Everybody else on him. Oof. Man, that was close. Jeez. Oh. Oof. Uh, caravan contract. This wrinkled piece of parchment appears to be a written contract. Balin, deliver these five crates of supplies to the Emporium. Make sure to get a fair price for that unscrupulous Kalashite weasel for mob. <laughs> hmm. There have been rumors of orcs. Well, there must have been something to those rumors. Okay, is that everything? Yep. Yeah. Look over there, we need this stuff. Let's see, Matt, you can carry a little bit of this stuff. Those potions will be worth their weight in gold. And I see a chest over there. And I'll get whatever reward I get from the tavern. Or from a roast guard. So I am doing really good. Nobody's died yet. <laughs> okay, let's sneak over there and see what this chest. Make sure it's not trapped. Doesn't seem to be. And a spell called horror. Why can't this guy learn the spells? I guess he's an illusionist. Okay. Whew. Man, that was close. Right, let's go ahead and level these guys up. Level up. So that was easy. <laughs> Nothing to it. <laughs> level him up. And let's rest. Cast our spells again. All right, so I think I'll play this. I want to get to the, you know, through this prologue, obviously. To tell you the truth, I'm having so much fun, man. I just <laughs> I don't want to stop. <laughs> That's a pretty good sign. You know, this game is actually a lot better than I remember. I don't know what the hell I was, my problem was. Back in the day, I just remember thinking this game was such a letdown for some whatever reason. Uh, I don't know if my standards were too high or what, but this is a really good game. I guess because I was coming to it from the gold box game. I really like the turn based combat. But you gotta admit, it is this game is uh, a lot closer to that with letting you create an entire party. Okay, that's probably booby trapped. Should go to red. Oh, what's this? Boots. Some boots. What are these boots? <laughs> oh, I can't identify them. Uh, what controls that? Why does this guy have dexterity of negative four? Oh, I guess because they're loaded down with stuff. Yeah, I need to get rid of this stuff. What's up with these boots, though? I guess I had to have a spell. I don't know if there's anything like a lore ability in this game. Boots, man. I wonder what those are. They're <laughs> probably cursed, but pretty sweet if those are uh, boots of strength or speed. And there's 
Get more orcs. Oh, that is not what you want to see. That shaman. Where did I get my rogue back? Well, he always seems to have the most threat. Yeah, see, these guys are just standing around and attacking. Okay, I guess I won't pick up the staff. Who am I kidding? <laughs> Get everything! What's that? What's that little button do? That's a latrine or a drinking hall. Some things are probably better left unknown. Okay, I've about taken everything. Oh, oh, nope. There's another axe yes. down there. Get that axe. <laughs> and I'm gonna be swimming in pennies. Probably some more wolves. Might as well kill them while we're out here. And then, uh, back. We should be in pretty good shape. Well, this, there might not be too much. Maybe that's all we can do here. I don't see a way through there. It just goes back the way I came. So mission accomplished. Go back to Rothgar now. You saw my extra loot first. Snow drift in. Go up to Pomab. I might not turn this into Pomab, I don't remember. Pomab. Pomab, uh, the Kalashite. You're so full of Kalashite. <laughs> alright, alright. Well, he's obviously not the person that we sell to, but... Whoa! 250 gold for that Winter Wolf belt. See, this was, a uh, Well worth it. I mean, these battle axes are only worth one coin. The short bows are worth six gold. You know, it might not hurt to have, uh, just everybody have a short bow. In case they get wounded, you know, they'd have something they could do. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. I think I'll just hold on to a couple of them at least. Just How can I help? In case. I don't need a short sword, though. And gold. Uh, yeah, short swords, another winter wolf pelt, some necklaces, a couple of battle axes. Yep. More <laughs> battle axes and short bows. So when it's red like that, that means they can't wield it. The only else we can do is figure out what these boots are. What is that? Well, there should be an identify option. Right. Gotta be a way to. Maybe he has to. What is it you talking require? To him. Would you tell me what these boots are? Buy, sell. How do you identify? And what is this? Steel, I guess? Hmm. How do you identify items in this game, then? I don't know. I might have to look that up. Alright, anyway. 
Definitely want to get this guy some armor before I forget. So he can wear like studded leather armor. Let's check him out. Well, three is not bad. You see how quickly they run out of arrows though. So this guy, those can't Go ahead and do this. That way, just in case they have a little bit of, of a ranged attack, right? Alright, then I think I can just sell the rest of the stuff. Hours of entertainment. You know, they're worth six gold a pop. I'm just gonna... Why can't I identify that? Who... If it's not the shopkeeper, I don't know who's... Who identifies stuff. It's kind of weird. I guess maybe, uh... Somebody in the tavern can do it. Maybe Grisella? I never did get their Grisella Zell. Got to rectify that. Yes, yeah, so how about a drink? <laughs> Gris Grisella's Dale. Oh, I'm drinking. Still no rumors. Snowfall in the Spine of the World Mountains is particularly heavy this year. If it keeps up, the passes will be still for months. All right, Matt. Try some knee cracker cider. No. <laughs> Strange lights have been flickering and flashing in the temple lately. At least that's what old Jed would have you believe. More than likely it's the booze that's making the lights dance in front of his eyes. He just happens to be looking at the temple and it kicks in. <laughs> Alright, we'll let our thief have a Luskin scout. How about some winter wine? Snowfall on the spine of the World Mountains is particularly heavy this year. If it keeps up, the passes will be sealed for months. <laughs> I think everybody's sufficiently sloshed at this point. Let's see, what else can she do? I just don't know what some of these options are. But i got to figure out how to identify my boots. Be right back. I'm gonna figure out how to identify these boots. All right, so it seems like I need to go to the temple to do it. Let's get our butt over there. I've got to know what these boots do, man. Your journey has brought you to this temple again. What is it you want? Yes. Look, identify. Perfect. Hundred gold. Quiet boots. Move silently. Plus seven. Yeah. Not very exciting. I guess it'll be useful for the thief. Man. That's a pretty cool statue. Okay, then we gotta go back to Rothgar's place, and I think we'll be ready to go to the next... The chapter one, basically. <laughs> Wrong building. Let's see which one's from Rothgar. Which one is Rothgar? Pomab, Winter Cradle. There's where we want to go. I just love this music. This makes you want to adventure. All right, Rothgar, we have done every possible side quest. <laughs> oh, good, you've returned. So I came across what the... news of the caravan from Cardinival? Came across the caravan just outside of town. Been attacked some time ago by orcs. 
I tracked the orcs to the nearby cave and paid them back for their butchery. Take care of supplies are safe within the cave. Mm, strange. It is not usual for orcs to be so brazen as to attack caravans so close to town. I wonder if it is the anticipation of the coming winter that is driving their actions, or if it is something more. In any case, at least we can still retrieve the supplies, thanks to you. You've proven yourself to be quite capable. Quite capable. I'm glad you've decided to come along with us to Kaldahar. We still have preparations to make Damn! before we depart for Kaldahar. 3600 Take this list of supplies to Pomob's Emporium across town. While you're there, you might outfit yourselves with whatever gear you think you may need. Return here when you are packed and ready to go. Come on, Rose Gar, you think I'm a total amateur? I did write the book. <laughs> See your PGs. <laughs> Let's level you up, Garen. Okay, I see he doesn't get anything. Information. Oh, he does right here. Thacko reduced by one, so he can hit better. 13 additional hit points. Lore increased by one. So this guy might actually be able to identify stuff for me. So his lore is up to two. Nice job. Go away. There we go. You mean this guy's already... My thief is already level 3? James, and he's got a 9 intelligence. But that's to slowed him down. Let's go ahead and keep... I don't want to be in a position where I can't open locks and disarm traps. But What's the difference in hide and shadows? Disappear in the shadows or any other type of concealment? I don't know. I guess that might be useful. Look at his information. Yeah, so he doesn't have any lore. Ooh, and our Christian. Our mage is leveled up. Gets an additional mage spell. Thank God. His lore increased by three. Whoa, his lore is 26. He's the one that should be identifying stuff. Let's check this guy. Oh, why does his screen look different? Information. What the hell? Where does it give me my lore at? It's kind of weird that their screens would look different. Okay, lore 26. It's under proficiencies. Lore 22. Lore 0. 2, 2, 2. So this Christian is the best one at identifying items. Okay, we just gotta go get the supply list turned in. I think we're good to go to chapter one. There's the kids again. I spoke him with a stick. I don't think I should kill that squirrel, just, just to see what happens. Alright. Come to deliver the list. Huh, another 1800 XP just for that. The expedition will be departing shortly. Deliver the supply list. <laughs> Whatever, Pongob. Farewell. I think I'll stock up on arrows while I'm thinking about it. Definitely don't want to run out of arrows. The question is, where are the arrows? There they are. Let's go ahead and get <laughs> a lot. I do not like running out of arrows and bullets. All right, let's make sure we're fully loaded. Nice. Got this guy using a dagger for now, but 
he could switch over at any time. Potions. Nice. All right, everybody. Well, just about. Let's see. Close enough. I think we're good to go. Uh, return to him. We're ready to depart. Oh, so here we go. Looks like we're about to get out of the prologue into the first chapter. And I think that'll probably be good enough for this this video. You got a pretty good sense of the game. At least the <laughs> I will play a little bit of chapter one. I want to see if they, how well they maintain this level of storytelling. There you are. All is set. The others are assembling as we speak. Are you ready to leave as well? Make haste. I you spotted I heavy clouds hanging over the mountains this morning. I suspect snow will fall in the passes earlier than normal this, this season. This guy gets an extra spell. And sleep to the mix. Yeah, I can't. I'd have to go back to the end to rest. <laughs> Screw it. There you are. All is set. The others are assembling as we speak. Okay. Are you ready to leave as well? So it was that the patchwork militia set off from East Haven bound for the troubled village of Kaldahar, with the party of strangers in tow. On they traveled, across the windswept tundra of the day, through the foothills of the spine of the world, and upwards on the steep and treacherous trails of the Kaldahar Pass. Eager to seek out the evil that threatened the pass, they did not expect it to find them first. High upon the cliffs of the pass, a band of frost giants had prepared an ambush. Hurling boulders and dislodging massive outcroppings of rock and snow, the giants sparked an avalanche that thundered down the mountainside and crashed down upon the heads of the unsuspecting expedition. Those fortunate enough to survive the avalanche pulled themselves free of the mountain of snow and bodies that now barred the way back to East Haven. Battered and disheartened by the loss of their comrades, the survivors had little choice but to continue on to Kaldahar, alone. Not good. What a great way to set up an adventure. Your world map has been updated. Hey, we got a hermit. Merciful gods! You're lucky to be alive! Are you alright? Anything broken? You seem to be in one piece. <laughs> no, we are not alright. Half the damn mountain just fell on top of our expedition. <laughs> Gotta pick that one. I know, I saw the whole thing. I was dozing off in my cave over yonder, when I felt the ground begin to shake and heard a rumble something fierce. Yes, what I what a wonderful life. Just napping in your cave. It's a good thing you ran forward instead of back into the past like the others, poor bastards. One thing's for sure, I'm not digging their bodies out from under there. They'll have to wait for the snows to melt. <laughs> We're touched by your concern for our fallen comrades. <laughs> uh, Koldahar, why would you want to go to that miserable little burg? Nothing there but a big tree and a bunch of shacks and lean-tos. Uh, we come to lend whatever aid we can. A fool's errand. You're better off worrying about yourselves than leaving them townsfolk to deal with their own problems. <laughs> Do you know the way or not? I suppose it wouldn't hurt to point you in the right direction. Follow this trail east through the valley. And keep your guard up, there's goblins everywhere. So I think getting to this uh, little town, Kaldahar, that'd be a good stopping point for us. But, you know, I'm gonna explore <laughs> every damn thing I can. See, can I rest here, I wonder? Yeah, there we go. I can pick up that. There we go, let's try that. Okay. Yeah, there's our goblin. 
This mat charging in. Just like a mat. He takes damage every time. Now let's turn on the uh, see if we can turn on some more details in these in this combat. Let's see to hit rolls and turn that on. Uh, state changes combat info. More confirmation prompts. No cosmetic attacks. There we go. Now we're starting to get those attack rolls. If these shields are worth carrying around or not. See some arrows in there. Go ahead and pick them up. Is that a chicken? Chicken? Why is there just a random chicken out here? What's a chicken doing? <laughs> Great ambush, guys. <laughs> Magnificent work. Stupid goblins. Man, what is up with that chicken? You know, I think I'm getting... This guy maybe is a little too burdened or something. That's why he's going so slow. My barbarian just... See my half-orc, he just gets in there. Okay. Whew. I can't tell if it's the game making those winter sounds or that's just outside. <laughs> There's another chicken. goblins for us. Got that sleep spell I kind of want to try out. What happened to my rogue? How did he get switched to that? <laughs> 20 piercing damage from Matt. Oh, what is that? Potion. Well, at least I won't run out of arrows. I'm gonna explore. Let's go ahead and heal up that one. Heal up Matt a little bit. He's getting a little bit low. Oh boy. There's a good chance to try out my sleep spell. Oh, that was that was wonderful. <laughs> Come on, attack guys! What the heck? Did that already get damaged again? Jeez, we can't keep this guy. Man, I'll tell you, I'm impressed with those beard smite. He's doing a great job. Somebody dinged. It's kind of neat that they ding at different huh? times. I'm going to just keep picking up these shields. I don't know if they're worth anything. But I know the battle axe is only worth one gold piece. See who dinged. Jan dinged. Good for you, sir. Multi-class level two. Good. You didn't get any new spells. Yeah, he did. 
Gets a new priest spell. Let's go ahead and give him another cure light wounds, I think. Can't really go wrong with that. Check the big map. What the heck's this thing in the middle here? He's telling me something there. Ruined Mill. Grand Marshal up here. Goblin Marshal, what am I doing here? Rrr. Oh, you can speak common. Of course, not all goblins are idiots. It's <laughs> just most of us. <laughs> <Rawr>. <laughs> what is the buzzing in my head? <laughs> What's wrong with you? Oh no, something's in my head. It's whispering things to me. My mind can't understand it, but something inside me does. I have to answer it. Rawr. It's going mad with pain. Poor goblin. Marshal. Instinctive urge to answer the voice in his head. Let's go inside the mill. You gotta help the goblin, right? They're not all idiots. Uligar, who are you? I'm Uligar, Chief of Bleeding Eye. Bow before me and pay tribute. Are you serious? <laughs> Sorry. Well, we got six options here. Uh, sorry, I don't give tributes to smelly morons. Ouch. Why should I? I refuse. I'll not pay you a tribute. Whoa, hold on. There's no reason to be hostile. Here, take my gold. Just don't hurt me. I have to be going now. Sorry, no tribute. Farewell. See, why should I? Do not mock, Chief of Bleeding Eye. You give tribute now or die. <laughs> Boy, you're stupid. I'm not giving you one copper piece, much less my gold. I bet you shut up before I spill your guts all over the floor. <laughs> Let's try that. You insult me. Wolves will feed on your flesh tonight. We'll see about that. I wish I had my sleep spell. Oh, we'll see how I do here. These guys are a little tougher. They're after my archer again. And that's it for them. Pay tribute. It never works in real life, you know that? You demand tribute. Oh, what's this? Another magic dagger? That is great. I'll get the... I'm not gonna leave that scroll there. Blur. Oh, that's a good spell. Okay, let's see about this uh, dagger. Maybe he can identify it. Applebane. Applebane plus one. Small steel dagger with a shadow top handle. Applebane was once owned by the halfling thief Pelowin Redgrass. Pelowin was a kind but morose individual who spent most of his time sitting in a large rocking chair that he took with him on adventures. Uh, before important adventures, he would just sit in his rocking chair and eat apples with the aid of his dagger. Pelowin's blade was so rarely used for combat that his comrades started calling it Applebane. So it does 1d4 plus 1 damage, speed factor 2. Let's see what that'll do for my rogue. Apsil's dagger, minus, minus one. Apple bane. Let's see, this one is 1d4 plus one damage. That's just 1d4. So I think that's a little bit better than what I had. I guess I can give the other dagger to... What is this? I guess I can give this other dagger to my uh, archer. Oh, and there's downstairs here too. Let's see if we can rest up. Ooh, 
grapple play. Oh, cow, what have I gotten into here? Okay, let's try the sleep spell now. Boom. <laughs> yep. That's how it's supposed to work. I think I might have to stop picking up these shields and just go for the gold because otherwise I'm going to get too heavy. Ooh, we got a bunch. What's this? Rolling axes. I'm give that to my dwarf. That'd probably be a pretty good thing to run weapon for him if he needs to throw. Is it a ladder up? Oh, what's, what's that over there? It's purple. It's purple. Oh. What's it? The, what? Germsy. Shh. Be quiet or the goblins will hear us. Uh, what's your name, little boy? My name is Germsy. Germsy. I, I never wash my hands. <laughs> uh, I lived here at the mill with my dad and sister. Let's see. I'm let me take you to the village. <laughs> Tough luck, kid. Life's hard. <laughs> that is hilarious. Ha <laughs> ha. All right, let me take you to the village. 3,600 XP. Damn. You have helped Jermsey find the courage to leave the frozen mill and seek refuge at the temple of Ilmater in Kuldahar. Good for me. Good for me. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I don't like it when I pop up surrounded. Generally not a healthy situation. So not a healthy situation. <laughs> These mages just do not have the health to be engaged in combat. Melee. Okay, let's see. Do I have to rest again? Maybe I can just heal him up with a quick spell. Oh, cast. Alright, nice. Is there nothing in here? I guess that was just a little fight. What is that? It's like a light bulb. Yes, we will leave, but first we have to shuffle and jiggle. And jiggle, 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 jiggle. There we go. Goblin Marshal, leave him alone. So the only thing is whatever's up in there. Come on, everybody go. Some more goblins. Matt's on mission. Here comes my rogue. Eventually. <laughs> James. Make some good rolls. Let's see. You want to check these treasures. Same with the barge. Let's get them here. Garrig. Me will smash your face! <laughs> smash your face! Head hurt. Why you make Garrig's head hurt? What's wrong with your head? <laughs> we make your head hurt because you're a big dummy. <laughs> Let's see. I'm not doing anything to make your head hurt. So everybody's head is hurting around here. Well, migraines going around. 
Gary wants to pound head through wall. Make Fane go away. I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> that's an excellent idea, Gary. Hitting your head against the wall as hard as you can will certainly make the pain go away. It's an old Regedman, Regedman barbarian remedy. <laughs> okay, let's see. What's wrong with your head? No, no. Walk here from my cave. Need to answer call. Now cannot. In the head. It hurts. Let's see. That's not a very good idea. Maybe you're right. Good luck, Gehrig. Alright, so clearly something around here is... Giving people headaches. It's not the inventory system. Oh, there's a cave. Maybe we'll find whatever we need to find here in the cave. Holy! Yeah, this is probably going to be the death of a character. <laughs> no no service. No, nope, no spells in there. Not good, not good. Maybe there aren't very good shots. Hard to hit. Come on, everybody. Stay focused. Stay focused. We're here. Your command? Yeah, that's a lot of goblins. Any one of those arrows, man. It can do a lot more damage than you think. Oof. Oh, man. Gotta admit, this party is kicking some... Kicking some ass here. Short bows he can carry. Let me get Matt to give, have him carry some. He's, maybe that'll slow his roll a little bit. Yeah, a lot of treasure. Short bows are worth six gold each. Okay. That looks like a man there. Maybe it work? I don't know what that is. I haven't seen any good loot though, so let's move on. Deeper into the cave. What kind of Beetles. with the corpse. It's nice of him not to attack me, though. Come on, James. Burp. Beetle burping. Damn, James is about to die. Get you out of there. Gotta be some good loot in here. Yep, some kind of magic arrows. Alright, let's see if we can identify these. Arrows plus one! <laughs> oh, I saw some more treasure. Damn it. Gym. Uh, let's see. Doesn't he have a gym bag? Let's see. Potion bag. Scroll case. You ought to give him the gym bag. Bing. Okay. 
I still don't know what's making these uh, orcs' heads hurt. Cleared out the cave, killed these beetles. You think the beetles? Is... Surely it wasn't the beetles. I don't know, is there something over here maybe? No, I can't get over there. Still, I don't see anything that would have anything to do with a weird call. I guess we can explore down here some. Probably rest up. Oh, oh monsters awaken you. What is that little thing? <laughs> How dare you awaken me from my slumber? Okay. Well, the zoom is nice too. I can really zoom out long ways. But I still do not see. Surely it's not the chickens. <laughs> Is it the chickens? Yeah. I don't know, guys. Might be something in a different, different screen, different map. Oh, wait a minute. Can't get off the... I guess I can't get off the map. So I'm definitely missing something here. Mm -hmm. That's blocked. There's the cave. Why would there be a bridge over here? Oh, there we go. Here's the world map. Fighting their way through the goblin-infested valley of the pass, the survivors of the doomed East Haven expedition at last came upon the small hamlet of Kaldahar. Nestled within the roots of a massive oak tree, the tiny cottages were a welcome sight for the weary travelers. As the party approached the town, a warm breeze blew over them, chasing away the chill of the frozen pass and carrying with it the sweet scent of cooking fires. All right, folks, I think this will do it. I should give you a really good idea. You even got an achievement there. Of what Icewind Dale is all about. You know, as I say, a lot of people will tell you that uh, Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 are way better games. And I would have probably agreed with that uh, to a large extent. But you know, on the other hand, there's a lot to like about this. And i got to tell you, you know, I don't know... Uh, I don't remember it being as much fun as it is. <laughs> Maybe I've just been so uh, desperate for a good game to play uh, that, you know, what seemed mediocre back in the 90s or whenever this came out, now it seems so totally awesome. I love the idea that you can create all these different characters. It's a little bit limited, limited compared to the, you know, third edition and later editions. I mean, this is more straightforward in terms of leveling up. Uh, but still, I think it makes up for that for the fact that you can have so many different characters. I kind of miss the old Thacko system, right? Uh, so all in all, I think this is a great game. I mean, this was just, I just, up to chapter one. And I already, you know, feel like I got my money's worth out of it just by, just by that alone. Uh, so yeah, there you go. Not a perfect game. There's definitely some problems with the, the pathfinding. It's a little wonky. The AI seemed to be giving me some trouble. Other than that, though, I really think the pros outweighs the cons here. I mean, gr gorgeous music, artwork looks looks great. I mean, look at this, even. Uh, you know, as usual, I don't think beamed. I think well, I haven't really delved into the uh, what Beam Dog has done here in terms of enhancements. You know, it seems to play fine. Uh, it's been long enough since I played the original. I don't quite remember what what's new, what's part of the expansion, uh, Hearts of Winter. 
I don't, I don't know all that details of that, unfortunately. But I, I'll put it this way. I think it's well worth the money uh, to go ahead and get the... Uh, if you want to get the Enhanced Edition. As I recall, you can... I'm pretty sure I remember playing the uh, this original version fairly recently and just, just plugging it right into uh, Windows and not having any issues, not having to set up an emulator or anything. But <laughs> again, it's been long enough. I don't trust my memory. Uh, so you might be better off just going with the uh, this enhanced edition. Certainly nothing wrong with it. Uh, it seems good. Uh, so anyway, I'll leave it off here. If you've got uh, if you played this game before, uh, maybe you know more about the enhancements, like to talk about those or uh, but, you know, whether you like this game better than the sequel. I know some people actually have told me they prefer the first game better because they like that uh, this edition of the rule set better, basically. Uh, but other, other people, they get kind of fixated on the lack of story or whatever. Uh, you know, maybe maybe towards the... Uh, it could be one of those games where the beginning is very rich, but then as you get further into it, it gets more and more sparse. <laughs> you know, basically run out of passion and money, more importantly, uh, to fully develop it out. Uh, I'm not sure. So let me know what you think about the uh, mid-game, late-game, uh, how it holds up to this first bit. Because I think this first bit is excellent. Uh, so anyway, I'll leave it here. encourage you to go get the game. If you haven't played this before, obviously you should definitely play this as the first opportunity. But if it's been, you know, five, ten years since you played it, go back and play it again. I think you'll be like me and find a lot to enjoy. But uh, meanwhile, I'm going to get back into this because... Uh, I got you are. Oh, Nate here. <laughs> got to figure out what Nate wants. Uh, so anyway, have fun. And that's all for this week's episode. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, should be back soon with another one of these reviews. Also has some interviews lining up. So just let me know if there's somebody in particular you want to see on the show. If there's a game you really want me to cover. Uh, sound off in the comments. I will definitely consider it. Uh, but there's many, many more uh, reviews to come. I mean, they're just, I'm just actually looking through my collection, and there's quite a few that I haven't covered. I've been meaning to, but uh, just now getting around to it. Uh, as always, I want to thank you uh, very, very, very much for your support of this show, for being part of the Matt Chat team, for making this uh, video, uh, making this YouTube channel possible. Couldn't do it without you. So uh, thank you very, very much for your support. Uh, if you uh, would like to join the team, just go to that link in the show notes to the Patreon site. Uh, all I ask is a buck a show. You could certainly go two bucks a show, <laughs> five bucks, uh, whatever you like, uh, whatever you uh, think the show is worth uh, to you. Uh, you know, whatever amount it is, I really appreciate it. It really means a lot to me. So thank you for that. Uh, also tweeting about the show, uh, sharing uh, links on Facebook. Uh, forums, uh, whatever it is you do, just know that I see that and I really appreciate it. So, thank you. All right. What about that news from the Met Key? All right, so, John Ayer wrote in about this. He's uh, well, he tweeted it in, actually. He says, uh, hey, mate, have you had a chance to play Operencia RPG? It's a really great old school RPG. Kind of like an evolution of uh, on Grimrock. Talking about Legend of Grimrock, one of my favorite games uh, from recent times. Uh, so I looked into this. It's called Operencia the Stolen Sun, and they describe it this way. Uh, the game embraces everything you love about classic first-person dungeon crawlers. Uh, enhancing the old-school turn-based RPG experience with modern sensibilities. Guide a team of memorable characters through a world inspired by Central European mythology. Uh, so that all sounds great, but here comes the rub. It's only available on Xbox and the Epic Game Store. <laughs> it's one of those where you have to wait a whole year to play it on Steam. And I know that's got a lot of you guys just really riled up. Uh, you know, I'm getting all these... Uh, all the stuff over the back channels about people, how much people hate and loathe uh, the Epic Game Store and how they're uh, <laughs> basically boycotting uh, any games that come out on that. I, you know, I'm not quite sure how I feel about it. I mean, it's not like uh, Steam has really impressed me with their ethics or anything. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't hate Steam, obviously. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, it's, to me it's more of an inconvenience than uh, uh, something I would... Uh, 
you know, want to get political about or whatever. But anyway, let me know what you think. I might be being naive and <laughs> not know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Uh, okay. Anyway, that, this Operencia game looks really good. Uh, I would like to try it out. It kind of, it, it definitely reminds me of uh, Grimrock. And then, let's see, Simon Bachman, uh, I saw another, while I was uh, looking at that tweet, this popped up. And he's uh, announcing this game Pathway has been working on. Uh, Pathway, the game I've been working on for the last few years is finally out today. It's called Congratulations, uh, Simon. Um, this is a strategy RPG set in the 1930s, Great Desert Wilderness. Outwit your enemies in daring turn-based combat, raid occult tombs, and make tough choices in a procedurally generated Grand Pulp Expedition. So, I mean, that's, that's quite the hook. And I saw a, a review posted there by Indie Games website, or a comment by them I thought was, uh, was nice. They say, quote, Pathway is FDL meets Indiana Jones with a sprinkling of Jagged Alliance. <laughs> I cannot stop thinking about it. Nine out of ten. That's what indie game uh, websites give it. Uh, this pathway. I mean, anyway, this looks really, really interesting. You might have to contact Simon, see if I can get him on the show to talk about it. Uh, or at least play the game a little bit, see what see what it's all about. If you, uh, if you played it, <laughs> you know, let me know what you think. Uh, see if uh, Simon's somebody you'd like to have on the show. Uh, just let me know. And then uh, finally, this is some news uh, from Chris Avalon, uh, speaking of him. Uh, we just looked at one of his uh, most famous games. This is uh, Samuel Horty, a PC gamer. They say, Chris Avalon has revealed plans, reveals planned KOTOR Knights of the Old Republic 3 premise, and it involved battling ancient Sith Lords. You would have, would have, <laughs> explored the origins of the Sith Lords before slaying them. Avalon also revealed that Bioware were keen to make the third game, as were an internal team at LucasArts, but it just never seemed to actually go anywhere. So this is a quoting from Chris at this point. Quote, So I don't know whether people didn't think there'd be enough cells, or if they didn't care about doing a single-player game. I know a ton of people who would want to play it, but obviously maybe those numbers aren't big enough, or whatever. So I don't know what the deal was. <laughs> uh, so that really stinks, of course. Uh, I guess Avalon's working on a new uh, single-player Star Wars game out, I think it's out today or anyway soon. All right, so that'll do it for the news. Uh, let's wrap it up with a quote. And I was looking up for quotes about winter. I don't know if you've been following the news, but here in the uh, upper Midwest, we've been <laughs> just sort of under siege by this blizzard. And it feels like it's February again. <laughs> not, not a good thing. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, here's a quote that might cheer us up a little bit. That's from Albert Camus, Albert Camus, Albert, I don't know how you pronounce that, goes something like this. In the depth of winter, I finally learned that there was in me an invincible summer. So ponder on that and see you guys next time. I consider it an insult to my backside that it was forced <laughs> to sit here growing carbuncles through such putrid adolescent slush.